that Sly Cooper Keen. Oh, it's so cool. I'm gonna tell you, I got to see it up close and it is perfect. <laughs> we also have an anonymous $250 donation saying, I, yes, it's awesome. <laughs> And they say, happy to be back. Oh, happy to see everyone back. Stay safe and have fun. Ooh, this is a great tip, especially to help with that Pokemon Snap bonus game. $50 from Zach, who says, if you're lucky enough to work at a company with donation matching, get that donation matching. Well, thank you very much. That was a great idea. Already awesome. Looks like we have now hit 20,000 out of that 30,000 needed for Pokemon Snap. So you all are doing incredible. We have less than 10,000 left to go. Alrighty, we also have a $100 donation from Z coming in saying, so hyped to see SGDQ happening again. Save the frames. And with that, it looks like we are finally ready for this Kirby and the Forgotten Land any percent run. Mr. Shasta, you're going to do amazing. Take it away. Hi everybody, welcome to Kirby and Forgotten Land. One of the best Kirby games ever made. I love this game so much. It's going to be awesome. This runs very great. Can't wait to be here to showing it off to you all, honestly. <laughs> uh, yeah, with me, I want you, want, you, want, you, want to introduce yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, what's going on, everybody? My name is Dangerous. Hey, everyone. I'm Akashic. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. So I play you all in one of the best songs of the game, too. Not here in, in the run, though, but yeah. Yeah, we're just over here jamming while we're waiting for the show to start. Just having a good time, you know? <laughs> Yeah, definitely not an understatement, though. Kirby in the Forgotten Land is Kirby's very first full 3D adventure game. Um, and honestly, they just knocked it out of the park with this one. If you it like really Super did. Mario 3D World, this is kind of like right in the same vein. You just throw the Kirby coat of paint on it, all the copy abilities and all the new mouthful modes as well. This game is an absolute treasure to play mm -hmm. and even more so to speedrun. And the transition was just so smooth, too. It really still felt like a Kirby game. Even exactly. On the it really round. does, like, yeah. Exactly. I can't believe how they nailed it. Everything that's familiar still feels familiar. Like, you just react the same way. I agree. Exactly. So we're going to start us running on wild mode right here. Or not wild mode. We're starting on spring breeze mode right here. And the reason for that is because of uh, uh, we have more, a little more health, and we also don't get 50 star coins at each level like you do in uh, wild mode, which saves a lot of time throughout the run. But yeah, without further ado, I, think, I say we start this up. There's a lot of run to go through, so let's do it. Three, two, one, let's jam. Good luck, Shasta. All right. You got this, Shasta. Thank you, thank you. So uh, the, sto the story of this game is uh, Kirby is just kind of walking, walking down the streets, just having a good time, and suddenly gets stuck in another dimension. And along with a bunch of, of his friends, like 300 wild Ds, uh, King Deity, Man Knight, and everyone else like that. Yes, we are in the Forgotten Land. Now, the very first thing that you saw Shasta do right at the beginning of the run, went into the pause menu and turned off the auto swallow ability. Uh, that's on purpose. Basically, anytime you swallow anything that gives you a copy ability, think like sword or bomb or something like that, Kirby will automatically assume it on default settings. Um, and there are a couple of cases where we don't really want that to happen. We don't necessarily need all the copy abilities as we're going. So we turn that auto swallow mode off, and we'll point out some of the reasons as we go along in the run. Yeah, right now, you also notice some movement here is I'm just sliding and immediately jumping. Sliding, is, as usual in Kirby games, has a bit of end lag to it, but it is very, it's a lot faster than just moving normally. So we cancel in this game by doing a jump afterwards. 
Just like that. And we'll be doing that throughout the entire run whenever I need to, like, whenever I don't have a power that like, makes me go faster, essentially. Now, with a couple of the other things that Shasta mentioned about being in Spring Breeze mode, one of the downsides of playing in Spring Breeze mode is that that kick has a bit of, like, a an auto-target function. And because Spring Breeze mode is the easy version, it actually targets on the things a lot easier, which makes things a little bit annoying, but obviously when you do the speedrun enough times, you know how to kind of avoid that. So you're going to be seeing Shasta stay away from a lot of the, a lot of the enemies while you're doing that slide kick. Especially in, in this level in 1-1, there's like some enemies you can just like accidentally slide into. Absolutely, yep. It's, it's supposed to like give you like more of an arc radius around you where it'll, like the auto home will just like target enemies, but like sometimes it just like does it, it just like targets someone directly to your side for no reason or like really far away. It's really weird. Also, we're a car, by the way. That's a cool thing that's happening. Yeah, we're kind of <laughs> just a car. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, and now we're not. Like, we, we only talk about that. It's fine. Now, that's, that's, that's a new thing about uh, this game is that this, Kirby can transform into different, uh, like, objects now, like that car, for instance, and a few things you'll see later in the run. I'm sure we'll never be that car again. Surely not. Ab <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> But first off, right here, we have a friend who's kind of trapped in a cage here we got to save. I don't know who they are, but we'll, we'll know soon enough. We have to get all these Awoofies right here and see ya. Now, Kirby's really well known for the copy abilities. You know, you swallow an enemy with a special power and you take it for yourself. Um, you're going to be seeing a couple of those in this run, mostly for speed and movement. Um, but it shouldn't be understated how powerful no copy Kirby is as well. When you swallow an enemy, you turn them into a star that you can then spit out at other enemies. And that by itself does a lot of attack damage. So there will be certain circumstances where you see no copy Kirby kind of take over the combat. No copy in general in this game is just way buff compared to previous games. You Absolutely. do so much more damage just like mm -hmm. by spinning out stars at like at enemies. It's ridiculous, honestly. And, and like, I love it too, because like there's actually a lot of strats to be doing in the run with no copy as a result of that. Which wouldn't be the case in other Kirby games. And like always, when you get more stars, you do a lot more damage. And there are a lot of opportunities with these bosses and 3D planes to pick up a lot of stars at once and do really, really big damage. Exactly. Yep. In particular, the star damage caps out at like four objects inside your mouth. So like if you if you swallow like five of them, for instance, and try to spit it out, it'll do the same amount of damage as like a quad star would. But you'll you'll see when we get to those points in the run where we're swallowing up four things and spitting them back out, you'll see just how much damage they can do to certain bosses. It's ridiculous. Also, dodge rolling the thing in this game. That's a new thing, new feature to Forgotten Land with non previous Kirby games. Yeah, it adds a little bit of uh, movement abilities uh, to the, to the arsenal that Kirby already has in in the 3D space, which is a lot. It is a lot, especially when you start getting the copy abilities in as well. There's a little dodge roll right there, a little cheeky dodge roll over the top of the rock. Yeah, I've noticed it's really good for small distances. Uh, they used the uh, dodge roll to get a felon in the rescue sequence earlier. Mm -hmm. Which is nice little optimizations it can do versus the uh, slide jumps when you're doing constant movement. We've already mentioned Elflin as well, too, but Elflin's like our, our friend that's just with us throughout the entire run. Uh, they're kind of like really important to the plot, but I don't want to spoil right now exactly why, but just know they're important and like they're, they're pretty cool. They're important because they're a friend. They're absolutely a friend. Excellent like, use of the no copy Kirby there. Sucking up double stars twice, and you can see just how much damage those double stars do to the boss. Two hits and, and he's out of there. And Shasta saves a Waddle D in a cage as a result of that. Now, the way that this game is kind of structured is that you're going to be collecting these Waddle Ds as kind of your checkpoint uh, collectible. Uh, for every boss at the end of every world, you need a certain amount of them. So we're not just going to be rushing to the ends of the levels to finish them. We need to collect a certain amount of these Waddle Dees along the way in order to unlock the bosses. And they are confined to the worlds themselves, so we get enough Waddle Dees in World 1, we unlock the boss. World 2 begins with a brand new set. Mm -hmm. Incoming really cool trick right here. Go ahead, Shasta. Hopefully I can get this right here. It is a frame-perfect jump. Hopefully I got this. Oh, easy. Hey, first one. Oh. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually multiple ways to do that skip, but that's the fastest way to do it. It's that is literally a frame perfect jump after getting hits and like jumping on the on like a single frame. I said that like five times in a row. It's hard. <laughs> I got nerves, you couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. 
I think the community calls that like turtle skip, skip, skip or something like that. This They call, they call it turtle skip because it's the third turtle. of it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that this was actually included in the demo and was discovered how to skip that in the demo before the game even came out. Luckily, they didn't patch it for us, so we're still able to do it. Otherwise, you kind of got to go all the way around the turtle and, you know, do basic game mechanics that we as speedrunners would rather just avoid. So. Like and also game mechanics. True. Yeah, true. exactly. And also, fun fact as well, too, that the skip is discovered by a run named Turtle. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great. Good stuff. Comedy. Now we're in World 1 2, and 1 2 is going to introduce us to our very first copy ability, which is Fire. Now, Fire is the ability that we're going to be using for movement primarily through the beginning part of the run. As you can see here, if you jump in the air and use your ability, it gives you this nice little fire dash. And this fire dash can be comboed into a bunch in a row and just allows you to kind of shoot through the stage. It's going to be a lot faster for us than doing those slide kicks that we were doing before. The only thing Chasta needs to be careful of when using the aerial fire is that if he ever misspaces it after too many of them, he loses the ability to use his multi-jumps in the air. So if he ends over a pit and can't get out, he is going to take that fall damage. Ah, that's right. Yeah, you got to be extra careful of that. You can also use fire on the ground, too, by pressing A, B at the same time. I do it in some spots, but it's not useful, like, totally everywhere. Oh, that was weird. It's flowing a bit. I'm going to do this. Yeah, backup strat. Good backup. Good, good save. Backup. Definitely take those. Yeah, Kirby and Mario games typically, like whenever you see a room with cycles like that, like speedrunners are almost like they're frothing at the mouth. They love that kind of stuff. You know, it's all about trying to beat those cycles, all about trying to figure out like what set of movements can I do to get to that stage before I'm supposed to. Mm -hmm. That's happened so many times with all the games I run. This game has a lot of them like that. So yes. It's great. Big fan. We're kind of just fire blasting through this stage here until we get to the end. Um, maybe we can do some donations here. We do have one wall again right here, though, which is actually confined to the camera. If we actually... Oh, true. Mess, yes, this one right here. If he messes one up at all, then we can't do the skip again because uh, the camera isn't high enough up to actually make us go over that gap, funnily enough. But Shasta nails it just fine. Nice and clean. Very clean right there. And uh, I think now that should be for donations then. Um, actually, I think you can go back far enough in the level if you, like, go back around the corner and then come back. It'll reset the camera for you. Oh, I there know that. Go. Yeah. Knowledge. Yeah. Fun fact. Pro Pro Knowledge. The <laughs> That's what we love of to having see. the uh, host as a runner. True, true. <laughs> I am not at your level. Don't worry. Okay, so, <laughs> but I do have donations for you that I would love to read out. Absolutely. We have uh, a $50 donation from According Leaf saying, thanks to Mr. Shasta for representing this charming game. Looking forward to an amazing Kirby run. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, one more? Yeah, go for it. Go All righty, $25 from Ashivi saying, at SGDQ running my newest speed game, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, I can't stress enough how welcoming the community has been, and I wish Shasta the best of luck, especially on 4-4 skip and Leon Gar skip. Oh, yeah. That's going to be the hardest one. <laughs> Yeah, there's all sorts of really... Uh, honestly, this is one of those games that, like, as you go along, it just gets more and more and more busted. It, like, you are you guys are in for a treat. Like, I can't even I can't even understate it at all. Absolutely. I've been saying that for, like, last few hours on the stream whenever I'm on stream. Y'all in for a treat this run. It gets more and more awesome the further you go. I will say, if you get Leon Gar skip for the first time, I am donating $50. I'm jumping out of my chair. I'm Same. donating $50 right there and then. I'm also jumping out of my chair for that one. <laughs> So what you're going to notice right now is that Shasta's actually going out of his way in a couple places in this level. They mentioned the Waddle Dees earlier, and something that's also important is there are secret objectives in every stage, and by fulfilling those, you actually get additional Waddle Dees. And that's how Shasta is going to work in getting all the Waddle Dees he needs for the boss fights with good routing. That's right, yeah. There's, for every level, there are like hidden ones that have secret objectives, like for example, this level. Um, if he doesn't fall off the stage as Carby, which is showing up surprisingly here again, as we said it might or might not. Oh, how'd that uh, happen? How did, how did he get here? I don't know how it respawned there. That's weird. <laughs> as long as he doesn't fall off the cliff, uh, you know, knock on wood, then we they, we get just like a secret Waddle D for that, like no time loss at all. Um, there are ones in the cages, and we're going to be seeing a lot more of them as the run goes on because the amount of Waddle Ds we need to collect 
is going to increase as the run goes on, but we typically avoid the ones in cages because they have like a little bit of an animation to go along with them. Mm -hmm. As yeah. well, we get three for completing every level, so there's that too. Exactly. So if you're at home watching and you're trying to look out for, hey, is Shasta doing this for a secret objective? You'll see it pop up in the bottom right corner of the screen whenever he unlocks a secret objective, Waddle D. That's right. Good call on that one, honestly. That's a good thing to point out. And Thank you're you. going to see a couple of those instances in this next level, so mm. see if you can kind of pay attention at home. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try and measure them too whenever I can. But like, it, it gets more and more like complicated the further we go into the game. In, in one one here, or in world one right here, there's a lot of really fast wall deeds to get. But some of the ones we timed over a course of just this game being out just end up being that much faster overall than like some of the other ones. Also, I love this song. Me too. It's such a cool routing thing though to figure out which ones are like the best to get versus like going to pick up a wobble D, right? Yeah, there's and like some that are just like slightly, slightly slower than others. That's why we don't get them. Just the nope. way questions. I don't know probably ask, but It also know. adds a lot of uh, routing flexibility to the run. Let's say you're a newer runner and you want to, like, there's a really hard thing to do. Like, maybe you don't want to fall off the edge in that level, but you can always just go out your way, get another Waddle Dee instead. There's so many options. Like, right here we got Waddle Dee, just pick up invincibility candy. And the invincibility candy basically just gives you not just like the inability to take damage at all, but it gives you like the, the powers boosts of all three types that we're going to talk about a little bit later. But mm -hmm. he's got boosted speed right now. He's got boosted attack. He's got boosted uh, everything. Um, we're using that speed to our advantage, and we want to keep this invincibility candy for as long into this level as we can, because coming up here is a mini boss. I'm going to see if you guys can even spot him, though. Where Here's is Wild he? Frosty, and he's out of here. There he is. <laughs> Yep. Holding onto that invincibility candy just long enough to be able to take care of that mini boss without even like blinking an eye. He's out. And I get to hear the full loop of the song. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, invincibility candy. That's just it's just such a good power to use. But unfortunately, we don't get that like at all much throughout the run. It's like the one spot I think we use in the entire run. Yeah, yeah, most of the places it's at, it's just kind of a little too out of the way. So now we just got to traverse the mall. Um, there's a, a hidden Waddle Dee for like taking the correct exits in this mall, but we just kind of take the shortest path. It's just a little bit too far out of the way. Like Shasta said earlier, World 1 has a lot of really, really quick Waddle Dees to save, so um, a lot of them don't make the cut in this world. But <laughs> we will be going out of our way for quite a bit slower ones as the run continues. Oh, yeah, I was going to say earlier, uh, so with Visibility Candy, we actually get a speed boost, but unfortunately it doesn't actually affect the power we currently have, which is fire. That's true, So yes. I, I tried to optimize back there, sliding on the ground a lot more, just to make sure I get more effect out of that boost. Basically, I want to go fast. That's the idea. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Yeah, let's Gotta go. Gotta go fast, baby. <laughs> Kirby games are so optimized, like once they get to high level with such little changes in movement like that, you would never notice if you, you know. And like, this game is only, oh, yeah. what, March, right? So this yep. game is only four months old, approximately. Three and months old, actually. Yeah, less than. And the um, amount of optimization and like the dedication of the community that has gone into this and like figuring out the routing and figuring out which Waddle Dees are better and which power ups to use are better has already come such a far way in that short time. It really has, honestly. There's been so much effort put in by community just to optimize things even further and further. Like, for instance, uh, well, funnily enough, it actually is faster still to use Sword on this boss fight here. It also gives you a wall of you that, that too, but, like, you have to get the perfect pattern, ultimately, to make that faster. Yeah. But so I don't go for it personally. Instead, what I'm going to do for Goromondo is I'm going to use uh, Ice. Yeah, Ice is the kind of the power-up, the consistent power-up to use in this fight, and we'll, we'll kind of see why. Ice is pretty busted. Um, but speaking of Waddle Dees for the boss fights, in uh, just for a moment, um, we don't need any Waddle Dees in the boss fights because the boss fights are already unlocked. The whole point of collecting the Waddle Dees is to unlock the boss fights. However, we will be making sure to grab just a few in the boss fights along the way before we get to the last world of the game. And we'll explain why that is as we get a little bit closer. Also, fun fact, this, this cutscene is skippable in the demo, not in the full game. Don't know why. You just got to get the full experience. I guess so. Gory Mondo, very intimidating looking boss, but Ice is going to trivialize it. And you're going to see why right here. If you get right up into Gory Mondo's legs like this, you can shield and use your blizzard attack, kind of in like a, a very repeating pattern. And you basically do double ice damage to the boss and freeze him very, very, very fast. And then when the ice shatters, it does supreme damage. Gory Mondo doesn't even have a chance to move. Um, that's just how powerful this attack is. Gets into the second phase, he's going to start spinning, but not enough time for the ice ability to do its thing. And 
end and bam, shatter, bam. and the boss is done. World one is Just complete. Like that. Let's go. I love the ice strat so much. It was in ice a few times throughout the run, but that's that's the main that's the main one we do it on. And also, well, the final boss later, but uh, yeah, it's a little, little spoilers on that one, but it's very good. Trust me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we didn't want to interrupt that. Thank you. Yeah, no. <laughs> it That's, it's such a treat. It's such a treat. It's While we're good. transitioning into World 2, I think we got to go back to the Waddle Dee town. we got to build the town. we got to prove that we're making some progress in our adventure. So I think this is the perfect time for some more donations. Absolutely. That is perfect because this is bringing in a lot of support right now. We have, Love to see it. We have a $1,000 donation. Woo! Let's go. Let's yes. go. Wow. <laughs> I love this. It's all GameStops in Huntington. Oh, It's the okay. donation message. and says, my GameStop team band together to support a great cause and watch the launch day of GDQ and BBQ. Go Shasta and don't forget to Puyo. Puyo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You want one more? Keep it going. All right. You got we, time. Okay, here's Lots the other time. one it's that I just long. saw. We have $5,000 from what? Fan Gamer coming in. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's, Let's go. go. All right, here we go. Hey, everybody. Fan Gamer here. We are excited to be back once again as a sponsor for SGDQ 2022. It's great to see and hear the audience again. We love the energy you bring to the show. Good luck to all the runners in the week ahead. Here's to a new record-breaking donation total. To help boost that donation, be sure to check out Fan Gamers SGDQ 2022 merch collection. I got some stuff, it's really cute. Where all 100% of the profit goes to MSF. We've got a ton of great new stuff like Wrong Warp Tie-Dye t-shirt available at fangamer.com slash GDQ. Boyo! Boyo! Thank you very much, thank you very much. Now, right here, you're actually forced to upgrade an ability. We can't get around this. We can't just go out the door because Elflin will, will not allow us to do that. We have to upgrade something. So for choosing from one of the best powers in the game and, and uh, one of the worst ones in the game, we go with the best one in the game. Wait, you don't like Cutter? I don't, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm not a Cutter fan this time. I was just a kid. It was my favorite power in Nightmare in Dreamland. I'll forgive you for that. Thank yeah. you. Unfortunately, pretty useless in this speed run. Even even the speed run, like, okay, so all water Ds is a category in this game where you collect every single one of them, not just the ones you need, right? And there's some, you know, some of those water Ds are like, okay, use this power up, right? Even in that speed run, Cutter is completely useless. Mm -hmm. I've been doing, like, boss attempts in the uh, arena for time, and I accidentally got Buzzer Saw once, and it was just <laughs> so slow. It took forever to kill anything with yeah, Cutter. It's such yeah. a shame. Super unfortunate. Sorry, Cutter fans out there. I'm sure there are some of them. It is super cool looking. It is very cool looking. I'll give you that one. I'll give it up. And now we're into World 2, and World 2 starts off with a bit of a bang. Upcoming is supposed to be, supposed to be, a oh. mini-boss named Bonkers. Um, but instead of doing this boss fight, we're going to try and avoid the boss fight platform by going up this tree. Shasta is going to jump off the tree and float towards the screen. And you're going to see right as he reaches the bottom of the screen, he's going to kind of nick past it like that. And now he's going to be in the river underneath the boss platform. Getting that skip on first try is very impressive. Yeah, well done. Go. Very good right there. Saves about 30 seconds from doing the boss fight. And then we're going to go over here. Just off screen, there's a uh, sand sculpture that I'm going to hit. That gives me a wall D. I want to go into that load zone as, as fast as possible because if I don't, I should get a longer load there, like a few seconds longer. Yeah, so, whenever, the text, really whenever the text is in the bottom of the screen, the load times, for some reason, they just kind of stall a little bit more. So if you can avoid that, we're going to try. There's a few spots on the run there I come, so that's the, first, that's the first part right there. Speaking of load times, you are running this game digitally, correct? I am, yes. How much time does that save throughout the course of a run? Weirdly enough, about 40 seconds, because the only only time that physical loses to loads is on pre-render cutscenes, like the import cutscenes. Mm. So like, it's actually pretty accessible to run this on, on physical if you wanted to. It's actually a top 10 runner that's, who runs a physical copy. Shout out to Bomb Happy. That's true, yeah, that's right. And there it is. Did we mention earlier how at the end of each stage you get three wall for free? Yes. Okay, just want to make sure. Yeah, every stage, three Waddle Dees, and then, of course, whatever ones we need to pick up along the way. I think every single level we get at least one extra Waddle Dee, except for one level that I can think of. But except for one. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that level when we get to it, because it's, it's an absolute treat. It really is. <laughs> we'll not spoil that one. It's good. Yeah, World 2 is kind of... This one's the, the calm world. I think that there's not a whole lot to really go over. Bonker Skip starts off. 
Uh, but the rest is kind of just like really good platforming and just really good movement with your fire ability. For now, at least. For now. I, I'd so say 2-2 two, two is for sure like that. After this, it gets, I, gets a little, I get a little spicy. Just a little bit. Right here, we're gonna greet. The, we're gonna greet three seabirds by uh, just uh, you know throwing some, some throwing some fire at them, uh, fireballing them. Just uh, yeah, resident you know. bird lover here. Please do not greet birds by flamethrowering them. I don't. We don't need roast chickens if you want to say hi. It's... Absolutely not. But Kirby likes doing that, and you know, I guess I guess they appreciate it, considering they give us a waddle dee for doing that. So I was uh, wondering, like, uh, where are they keeping that waddle dee that these birds can get to? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Is there just like a woofy off screen and it's just like, oh my gosh, you greeted three seabirds, I got a uh, Waldy! <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. I was like, there's probably just a woofy watching and he's just like, I guess that earns you a Waddle D. I I don't know why I'm giving this to you, but sure. Take why not? <laughs> I thought it was cool that you greeted those birds. They looked lonely the whole day. Oh, got oh, that? That'll count. Nice. Beating that cycle is very tight. Same as this one right here. I actually shield right here so I can get past that. And bonk, but no big deal. We're good. That room's really hard to do correctly. <laughs> nice and clean, good. nice and clean. Getting hit by those cannons takes a lot of time because Kirby stumbles out of it. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't fireball through it either. You just, get, you just gotta like, get around in some way. Something about Forgotten Land that's really important, if you're familiar with other Kirby games, this game does not have a lot of iframes on your abilities. There are a lot of things that you cannot power through at all. Mm -hmm. So you have to be really careful with your movement against in sections like that. Especially later on in the run, we're actually going to get a power. Actually, it's in this stage. We're getting a power in this stage, a tornado, where especially your movement is super important in order to save time with it. Because you can bonk off of stuff and just like go everywhere if you're not careful. Yeah, but so. Speaking of, speaking of that, too, this, this first screen right here is kind of the same way. That's if I mess right. up just a little bit, then I'll go off the cycles here of the Gordos and also the Shotsos. So we don't want, you, you don't want that to happen. If all goes correctly, we go through them just fine. Very nice. nice. And clean past the cannonballs. Very good. Now, Shasta's going to switch up his ability here back to ice. And that being for two reasons. One, we've already learned that ice is exceptionally powerful. But also, um, we get an ability, we get one of those secret Waddle Dees from Freezing Florina. Uh, so we get a little bit of a two for one here by switching it out. And, you know, fire has been our movement ability so far in this speedrun. Um, but. The only ability that might trump fire when it comes to movement speed is Tornado, which is actually what Florina gives us right here. So we're going to go ahead and take that for ourselves. Yeah, Tornado is really good. It mostly saves time on, like, whenever you go in a straight line, essentially. And yeah, like, like right there, I mess up my movement just a little bit, and I just get thrown out of whack. It happens. It's not the easiest power in the world to use. You kind of have to kind of, it's kind of route your movement ahead of time in order to, like, really save time with this. Oh, unfortunate right there. Snipe. Don't worry, I got this. You can actually cancel a tornado or any power you want onto uh, Arch Mount like this. It's like, that's good. Arch Mount sections are all auto-scrollers. If you have anything to read during this part, I think, uh, go for it. Hi. Hello. So we <laughs> How's it going? Uh, pretty good because we are over $25,000 out of these 30,000 we need for Pokemon Snap. Let's it's go. actually 25,700. Ooh. So that is uh, just over 4,000 left. We are getting very close to that. And a donation I really wanted to read uh, in related, relation to that, I promise I can speak, is um, $10 from Professor Oak, who says, don't make me say you were close about having the bonus game. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Uh, <laughs> yes, we need some wonderfuls instead. <laughs> We also have $25 from Palomar6 saying, Ooh. finally finished this game yesterday just so I can watch Shasta run this live. Very hyped to see what this ins what insanity this run may bring. Thank you so much, Palomar, oh, the homie. will not be disappointed, <laughs> that's for sure. Absolutely not. This run is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one more before we finish the Archmouth section. One more. Awesome, can do. $25 from Bomb Happy. Hey. hey. <laughs> oh. We talked to them earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. Bomb Happy says, always a great time watching Kerbo, and good luck with the hammer shenanigans. Ooh. Do your best, Mr. Underscore Shasta. The one and only, baby. Respect the lore. Underscore matters. That was all in caps. <laughs> I had to read it that way. <laughs> <laughs> So something worth mentioning is I actually have not seen this speedrun yet. They brought me on to react to the shenanigans with you guys in chat, so I promise 
it's going to be hype. Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> and, you know, my experience with this game is that I was a speedrunner of it at the very beginning when it first came out. Had the 80% world record for a bit, but kind of taking a break from it. And like I said, the development of this game and like changing the, the routing and the, the copy abilities and the strats has changed so much. And even just like the month that I've taken a bit of a break from it, that Shasta told me I'm in for some surprises as well. So I can't wait to see those. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this, in particular, I actually learned, like, I, I crammed in a lot of really fast, like, new strats in the last, like, week or two, week or two, just, like, to like, prepare for this. And, like, I actually was able to get a really nice PBS in the end, so, yeah. It's gonna be a lot of really fun stuff, a lot of really awesome, like, little things here and there. For instance, I think you're used to seeing fire in the, on this arena coming up over here. That's right. But now I'm using a tornado instead, which is a bit more complicated, but overall, uh, very fast, very good. I'm curious to see how you do big damage with Tornado. Yeah, da Tornado is not good at all for damage. That's the main thing about it. Other yeah. than, like, it's it's very good for movement. The damage output on it is atrocious. Unless you like get enemies stuck like, like stuck in your Tornado, but like this, for instance, like it's good for this. Ooh, that was, that was really nice. That was so good. Wait for it. The oh, come hit on, again? Wolf. Oh, yeah. Don't do this to me. <laughs> it's fine, though. We got these five flippers right here, and... Oh, well. Nice. Oh, no, this is nice. That gives you a hidden model D2, does it not? It does, yes. That gives the hidden model D. That's why I do that. You have to win the battle there by not falling to the water at all. So, like, that's really hard to do correctly. So, I'm glad that went pretty well overall, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of hype. Yeah, let's go. Something, if you've played other Kirby games, too, is that aerial movement in this Kirby game is very slow. And how they, they briefly touched on it earlier, it's limited by the camera height. You can't just puff as high as you want anymore. You have to start from a base platform height. So that's why Tornado is really good movement in stages like this, because you don't have to deal with slowing down in the air whatsoever. You can just go. And then right here, we're just going to Tornado all the way to these platforms. Ideally, you want to actually not end Tornado manually by pressing B. You want to have it just completely naturally, or anything else. Because there's, the animation for it just takes less time. Right, when you end it manually, you do the attack where you like release what you have held, and it just takes longer. Yeah, That's exactly. Right. And then, oh yeah, I forgot to even mention it earlier too, but I'm actually pressing R and up to do kind of a dodge roll in the water, and I'll move it a little bit faster while I can't use Tornado in it. Another thing too. Uh, I thought I thought you just wanted Kirby to look cute. Oh, he always does. <laughs> but especially there, that works too. Yeah, you know, bonus for style points, right? Oh, one quick thing too, I, I collected a ton of fish in that level because it actually saves two seconds on the end screen. Because otherwise the game will hint at you to tell you like, hey, you missed this wall of D, here's how you get it. But if I collect one out of the three objectives, it'll not have the pop-up happen. So, yeah, passive time save, let's go. Yeah, that's <laughs> the brilliant thing about speedrunning, right? You play a game so much, you get so intimately involved with it that you know even just the littlest details like that. There's so many little ones like that in this run. But it's also, there's this really hard trap I'm about to do on Tropic Woods. Yeah, so... One of the hardest ones in the run. It took me, like, I think six hours of grinding this just to actually be able to do this, like, perfectly once. But I've gotten a lot better at it, thankfully. Shasta has hyped this boss up for me all week. I am so, yeah. I, I'm a normal Kirby boss runner, and I have heard this is normal Kirby's time to shine. I am so excited. It is, yes. We're going to be juggling Tornado while uh, going through this boss normally. If I get this track, like, correctly, I will pop off. <laughs> That's all I'll say. I'm out of my seat. Yeah, can confirm this boss fight with fire is an absolute breeze. You know, you know, you guys know Pokemon types. Fire beats its grass, but I, I'm curious to see what happens with this. Ooh, that was very slick. You can see Shasta's trying to make the most of using more than one star at a time by sucking up two things at the same time. Doing that a couple of times with the coconuts and the stars. I also like the utilization of the wall there, trying to mitigate all of the clouds that he's spitting at you, making it just a little bit easier for you to engage in this fight. And almost done, almost done. And... Ah, oh, the roots dang. got in the way. Barely got in the way. That's okay. We can just push, push them off like this. There we go. That That'll works. do. Still very, very Pretty good. clean. Pretty we clean. Take we those. take those. I think I got triple star at the end there. That's why I didn't kill. That's okay. Mm-hmm. I think I've actually missed the tornado anyway, so I wouldn't have kept it. But I do, we, we got the desired effect of just keeping tornado, and that's awesome. That strat is really hard to do correctly. I almost got that. I'm really happy with it still. 
But Mr. Shasta, you forgot the blueprint. Oh, beans. <laughs> I've never seen a felon tell me that. That's cute. <laughs> yeah, if you're playing casually, you're like, oh, look, a collectible. Let's grab it. But uh, speedrunners, we're trying to avoid it as best as we possibly can. It's, it, it saves a small amount of time. I don't need it. I don't need Noble Ranger. I've gone there once before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a cool ability, though. It is pretty cool. I like it. It's got a yeah. big, like, hat on. Awesome. Shasta, what is your favorite copy ability in the game? Uh, either Fire or Space Ranger. Mm, yep. That's a good choice. That's yeah. a good choice. What about you? Um, there's minor two spoilers, so I don't want to go ahead and say them for the viewers. That, at home, know, but they are that, Sword Level 3 and Sword Level 4. That's exactly oh, yeah. fair. For me, Sleep. Oh, Sleep. Deep yeah. Sleep is so good. Deep Sleep's great. Yeah, I got some sleep fans in the audience. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I like it because it just represents me. You know, it's, it is what it is. I like big deep sleep because I get a big comfy head pillow on top of my bed. Yes. You know what else exactly. I like? I, lo I like this entire world right here. It's my favorite world, Wondaria. I feel like it's probably the same deal if a lot of people play this game. How could you not like Wondaria? It's so fun. The aesthetic is so cool, too. We get free wall D right here, but just go on top of that rocket, just like that. Also, the whole like background backstory of Vondaria is cool too. It's explaining one of the figurines. Well, es essentially, it's, it's like uh, it's like it's like a children's book series that got like really popular in this in this world, and like it, be it became a whole like theme park at the end because of it. All the dogs you see around, they're actually based on the uh, the in universe's writers of the of the uh, fairy tale. Yeah, they had two dogs, so they sent them to space. The dogs' names were one dar or uh, one dog and one D. I remember so that. Cute. Very good. Shout out to Kirby Games, just having an intense amount of lore in absolutely every corner. It's one of my favorite parts about the Kirby series as a whole. There you go. There's one you jump right there. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. Utilizing that horizontal movement that the tornado provides, using all of these like weird elements from the side of the stage, just like, you know, oh, things that you would yeah. never think to interact with. Just You can just jump on and gain as much vertical height as you possibly can and then mm -hmm. horizontal across the screen. This screen is a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to go off to the side and grab uh, Water Balloon Kirby, which probably my favorite mouthful mode, by it's the way. It's very good. But in this case, Tornado just has such a horizontal distance to cover that is it's just busted. It's just busted. Absolutely busted. Uh, we do have to use the Water Balloon Kirby here, and you can see why it's my favorite in just a second. Just full of hydration. Make sure to hydrate, gamers. Hydrate, everybody. Water good. So what is your favorite mouthful, Shasta? Uh, I'd say either Carby or like Cone B. I like both of them a lot. Those are my two favorite, too. Hey, let's go. Nice. I'm a driver for a living. I have to like cars. You know, that's so fair. Gamble. And we're going to be seeing the car in the next stage, too, I suppose. Uh, we are, actually, yes. That's true. Uh, what about you, Fu? What's your favorite mouthful mode? Uh, I like the ring mouth because I have a very close friend who hates it, and, it's, <laughs> and I'm desperate to get them a like figurine of that for their oh birthday. God. Oh yeah, <laughs> I want them to put it on their shelf and just stare, yes, stare exactly. them in the face every day. <laughs> the largest size I can possibly get. Yes. Absolutely. Big, also, also related question: What's your favorite power up in this game? You asking me? I'm asking you. Yes. Uh, can I read a ten dollar donation? Because I have somebody else answering that question. Please actually. do. Go for it. Yeah. This is from Kona Recon, who says best ability for Kirby: sleep. Hey. Well. Hey. That's, right. That's right. But then they say it's something I won't be getting during this event. A <laughs> hundred thousand by the end of the run. I would love that. Let's do it. That would you be do like We're a five dollar train with like favorite abilities, you know? All right. So this is a time section right here. At the end, we get a wall deep again in twenty seconds, which I should do handily. If you want to take a little guess, it's like what time I get here. Usually between sixteen and like eighteen seconds. That's right. So uh, if you get if you get right to the hundredth of a second, uh, someone maybe oh, in chat can gift you a sub. Wait, no, it's sub. Oh, never mind. I forgot. Never thanks, mind. Thanks, seventeen fifty-two. Close. That was pretty. Seventeen close. something. Not bad. We do that race twice. The second one is about thirty-seven seconds. So. About that, yeah. Thirty-seven, thirty. Like 36, somewhere around there. I think my best time on that casually was like 39.50, so. Not bad, not bad at all. Oh, mess up tornado just like here. I'm gonna stop it manually right here. I don't normally do that, but I wanna like actually land on the, uh, the rail there. Just make sure my movement just perfectly aligned here with where I wanna go. I can't emphasize enough how clean this tornado movement is through these last two worlds. It's actually incredible. Shasta makes it look way easier than it actually is. It took me a lot of practice to get this down like perfect. This game took me a lot of practice in general to like get good at, but I'm, it was all worth it in the end. This run just so satisfying and fun. 
So something I want to point out. Yeah, see you. Something I want to point out on Wild Edge that we didn't get to point out last time is Shasta waits to attack Wild Edge until Wild Edge puts their shield up because if you hit Wild Edge while their shield is up, they go into this stun, which one, it skips their phase transition to half health, so it saves a lot of time, and two, they take a lot of extra damage. It's very busted, honestly. I don't know why he does that. He just does it every time. Like, just don't shield. Come on. It's simple. Just dodge, man. Come on. Just dodge. It's easy. You're not, like, three times curvy size and have no mobility and all that heavy armor. You could totally just dodge. Exactly. If I can dodge roll, you can too. Come on, Wild Edge. Come on. I would pay to see that dodge roll. Same. <laughs> now, race number two, we do get a hidden Waddle D for uh, going through all of the cardboard check uh, or shortcuts, you could say. Um, and that's kind of just a given because we're speed running, right? We're not going to be taking the long way anyway. Ooh, Ooh nice time. Not bad, not bad. Almost sub 37, very nice. Very close every time of that. Got it a few times before. It's, it's, it's good. We're just gonna do this, see you later, Neil Laos, and that's the level. Once again, we actually get locked on the wall D there for, for being the race under, like, getting the gold time of the race there, but we don't get it because of the cage wall D. That's right. There's there, too many fast ones in World 3 to bother with the cage ones. Exactly. I love how FLN was willing to tell you, hey, you left this blueprint behind, but the Waddle D trapped in a cage? <laughs> that's not a priority. It doesn't matter. Don't sweat it. They'll be okay. It's They're a, it's replaceable. <laughs> not in my heart, though. No. <laughs> Come up, by the way, is my favorite level of the entire game. I love 3-3 three, three so much. Yeah. The aesthetic, the absolute charm of it is just off the charts. World 3 is just a great aesthetic overall, but this one's got like a, almost like a, you know, laser tags, like uh, House of Horrors is what it's called. Yeah, House of Horrors vibe to it. Ooh. It's just very good. Every level idea in level 3 is, in World 3 is so creative. Very like, charming. It's a, it's a nice, fun gimmick world where all the gimmicks are good. They really pop off this one, not gonna lie. <laughs> Nice. Against Tornado and have it just run out right here, perfectly timed on that on that hidden stack. Get three of those in order to get a wall D. Tornado, make, tornado makes just such quick work of this level because you go in such fast, straight lines. Um, this level has just enough open space for you to be able to kind of just breeze right through it. No pun intended, by the way. <laughs> Now we're gonna wait in the elevator here. So it's, it's supposed to be, it's supposed, it's the first section of, of a light bulb Kirby, but we're gonna just not use it. I know where to go here, thankfully. It's not a big deal. Yeah, you can, kind right of, you can kind of see the level ahead of you. Now, the only thing that really does block our path, the one thing that developers did think to do, was put some invisible walls in. So we do kind of have to follow the natural path of the level. We do have to kind of curve back and forth. But otherwise, yeah, we can just kind of avoid all of the light bulb stuff. And you're supposed to use light bulb at the end there to raise a path for us, but we just don't do that. We just yep. use tornado to go, to go right on top of where we need to go. And fast load there, nice. We've been down lately. You know, I always wondered in this stage, you get a Waddle Dee for eating the ghost snacks, but how do ghosts eat snacks? With their mouths? Yeah, but wouldn't it just go right through? Uh, I guess not. No, you have a good point. That is true, though. Well, anyway, you're making them sad, so they give you a Waddle Dee for it? I, I don't understand the logic. If there are any ghosts in chat, please please tweet at me so we, so we can sell this. I really, <laughs> I, I have to know. We gotta please. know this, come on. I am obsessed with ghosts. Please tell me how it works. <laughs> Wait just a little bit here, and then as soon as it pops out, I'd go with Tornado. And then there's a wall at the end, at the end of this elevator here, or this platform, I guess. Gotta have good timing for it, because it's hidden behind a lot of these, like, pop-out cardboard cutouts. It's so spooky, though. I don't know if I can time it correctly. <laughs> Let's see. Come on, you can do this. After these three right here, and bam, there it is. Easy. Good. Nicely done. Very good, very good. I honestly thought you were setting up a gag and you were going to miss the Waddle Dee. You had me <laughs> that fooled. was the funniest thing. I you done had that. me fooled. I should have done that. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> no, it's fine. Just very sneakily get like an unoptimal Waddle Dee earlier and don't mention it to us. Yeah, I'll, I'll go back to 3 1, just use a roller coaster real quick. Oh, yeah, no big deal. Roller honestly, coaster super quick. Yeah, p petition to add roller coaster Kirby to the to the any percent speed run. Petition granted. I'm down. <laughs> it's required now. I'm a Mari, I can do this. <laughs> just roller coaster percent, you know, no big deal. Yeah. Everyone will play it. It's truly the most fun thing in the game. Just have fun at the theme park, come on. <laughs> Speaking of fun at the theme park, we have to we have a really hard track coming up right here. 
where I have to make uh, two really, really tight cycles of Tornado. Personally, I found the strat easier back when I did Fire in World 3. Fire is honestly just a lot more a lot easier control to be able to go where we need to go here. Yeah, Fire but, has precision where Tornado has just kind of raw speed over long distances. In my case, I need to uh, puff away as far away as I can from that switch, so I have a l just enough time to get past the, the first train here. It spawns in as soon as I have that switch, so I have to move fast and got that one. First train, very, very well done. Not now done. the second one, you're going to have to follow behind this train really, really closely uh, and get up the ladder as optionally as possible. Doing this. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe, nice. maybe. Hold maybe on, hold on, cycle. hold on, hold on. Oh. No, uh, I think it didn't lose my power, though. We're good. Nice. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, no. no. No, we're not good. <laughs> You're setting me on a roller coaster of emotions enough. over here, Shasta. We're getting everywhere. <laughs> now, uh, something to know about Tornado, and that's relevant right here, is that if I start Tornado on the ground compared to jumping and then Tornadoing, you're actually able to do a full Tornado like across the way here. You wouldn't, if you if you were in the air when you stop the Tornado after you jump, uh, wait, if you if you jump and do a Tornado and then like it stops in the air, you actually go like really slowly in half the distance. So, like, there's a mechanic with almost all aerial movement abilities in this game where it's tied to your multi-jumps, and the lower you are in multi-jumps, the less you go on your tornadoes. It, like, has the same standing. So it's really, like, tricky. We go right past all these parade floats right here. This last one's a little weird. I went very fast, so I might be, like, right on top of it. Now we're good. Yeah, kind of have to fight with some invisible walls coming around that corner there, but making it look easy, nice and clean. And one more tornado right here. Ideally, we don't bonk and get the, the chili there. Very good. And right at the end, bam. Very smooth level. Very you're making this done. game look so fast, Shast. It's almost like you're speed running it. They don't call me Mr. Underscore Fasta for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, honestly, very few notable mistakes going on in this run so far. You're making it look really, really, really clean. I think the biggest one was just Tropic Woods. That was like not much. Yeah. Oh, hey, we've lost it's been well so far. Yeah. But that being said, though, we do have an RNG boss fight coming up very soon. Clara Line, uh, very fun fight in general, I'd say. But with Tornado, you have to juggle Powerless and also juggle the power at the same time. I, if I lose Tornado, it's not a huge, huge deal. I can get back at the Wall D shop we went to after like World 1 earlier. I can get back there, no problem between worlds, but ideally I want to keep it through this. The thing is, she can do two claw attacks, which like gives you like a, a star against the back at her, but she has the option to do like a, a third charged one, which gives you three stars, and I can get a double star out of that, and that's why I want ideally. She has a few other attacks too that like are that could be fast for us, but that's like the those are the main one, that's the main one I'm looking for there. Yep. She's so mean. And similarly to the Tropic Woods fight, this one is also with Tornado, and Tornado, unfortunately, is useless at combat, so it's going to be a no-copy fight. We're going to be uh, making sure that the Tornado doesn't disappear by sucking it up whenever it's just about to, but the, the majority of this fight is going to be done copyless. Go. Uh -oh. oh, she gave me this attack. I can get a double star of this, but it's weird. No, I can't. I didn't get sent that time. Um, I'll play this one safely. I might as well. It's fine. I, oh, she didn't do the, the, the other one. That's fine. She's being so mean. She's being very mean. Look at that. She just, like, stacks the for no reason. You don't do that normally. All right, second phase time. That was not the best luck there, unfortunately. This boss only ever gives me bad luck, so I'm blaming me on this one. I'm sorry. She it's, it's okay. You're doing your best. Now, these swords that are being thrown from the top of the scaffolding, uh, this is part of the reason we have no uh, the auto swallow turned off, because you can actually swallow these and get the sword ability from them. But what we want to do is gather a whole bunch of them all at once, and you can see spitting like four or more all at once does a massive amount of damage, and then it's just two more stars, and the boss fight is done. Very, very well good done. Case. Very good very execution. Good, very good. It's always phase one that's rocky there, but that, that was very well done. She oh, just does side. what she wants. But just to the blueprint. Heck! <laughs> no! No! Oh, man. Don't Elfman's worry. gonna be so mad at you. You know what? Let them stay mad. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna get one for FLN soon. Maybe. We'll I believe see. in you, Shasta. You wouldn't forget again, would you? I, Not for a friend. Y you know, maybe just for them. I don't know. Maybe.
The thing I, I don't forget though in runs is that this after World Three is a lot, of, just a, a large amount of downtime. So let's get some donations in. I can so help out with that. I did the um, best of that segue. Also, <laughs> no, it's all good. You did great. Um, also, you're doing wonderful so far. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Alrighty. Okay, we have another anonymous one thousand dollar donation. Oh Dang, let's go. Yeah. Oh. All right, crushing I it on day one. You. Absolutely I crushing it. Thank told you. Told you, people are coming out for this run. Like they are, they are hyped for this run. All right, anonymous says, "I always enjoy the positive vibes Mr. Shasta brings to these events. Thanks for showing off the results of your time and dedication, all in the name of a great cause." Absolutely. Couldn't Thank have you put it much. better myself, <laughs> honestly. Alt also donates $25 and says, Hello, everyone. Spanish speaker here. Why is everyone saying chicken over and over again? So confusing. Uh, Can I get Poyo. a chicken? I could go for some chicken right now. <laughs> chicken! <laughs> I'm so sorry for the confusion. Um, uh, speaking of Poyo, we have $25 from Build saying, Hey, GDQ, it's so cool to see Kirby in the Forgotten Land, aka the best Kirby game, on stage, mm -hmm. especially so soon after the game's release. Yeah, yeah. I'm so impressed with the work Shasta and others have put in to get the run into the phenomenal place it's in right now. Best of luck. Incentive goes to Runner's Choice. I'll donate another $5 if Kung Fu Fruit Cup does a sufficiently cute. <clears throat> For stream. That was, that was, that was really good. <laughs> that was <laughs> if anyone wants any like cool donations to be read, uh, here's a little prompt for you. What's your favorite power power up in general in Kirby? Actually, no, better one. What's your favorite Kirby game overall? My personal favorite is Superstar Ultra, and also like Planet Robot. This game's like number three, I think, for me. It's like really good. But so are those two as well. What about you, Dangers? Favorite Kirby game? Oh man, I think it's got to be this one. This one is really up there for me. I believe my old answer was, and I know I am unpopular for this, but I, I'm Amazing Mirror. Oh, oh that yeah. game is awesome. I Look love how different it is. I love exploring a big open world with Kirby. If they make a game like that in this 3D engine, oh my gosh. It'd be so good. It'd be sad. I would love that too, honestly. But for now, we're gonna make a lot of cycles with Tornado. You might have saw on the first level, first screen there, I went down an alleyway real quick, just get a wall D. Right here, I'm gonna use, use a Tornado right here to uh, hit that snow sculpture. For the same reason I hit, I hit it earlier in, uh, I got the, the, ten, uh, the tin of fish back in 2-4, just to save like two seconds in the level. We can still make this cycle no problem right here, while still getting that snow sculpture. Now we're getting into world four and the amount of Waddle Dees that we need to get to the end of every level is starting to incrementally increase. Um, so you're going to be seeing a lot more of these caged Waddle Dees. You're going to be seeing a lot more of these ones that are kind of, they feel like they're out of the way. That's just because we need more of them. Um, and as the worlds progress, they're just going to be a little bit more tricky to gather rather than just being sitting right in the open. I believe it caps out at, I think, I think the last world is 27 of them you need to get, right? I think world six uh, is 35, but there's also another 32. level on 32. top. 32, yeah, I think, yeah. And then, and then it's either 32. the next one's 27, I think. That's a number I remember for some reason. World five is 25. 25. Yeah, but as you can see, it's kind of going up as we go along. The first world was 17. Um, so yeah. lots of happening right there, by the way. Uh, we skipped using the staircase entirely by using Tornado. Which and then is such also, a shame. Yeah, I agree. And also we, we went across the way there and skipped like do that in that level normally by just like using tornado to go to the clock tower which once we hit the objective for a clock tower we just take the star across the way back to where we were before or back to where we like the end of the level is and we just beat the level by that point very good gives us a wall D as well by doing that it's one of the faster ones a lot going on in this run that's for sure <laughs> yeah and it's just we're like just getting into the thick of it now like the mm -hmm. first part of it was like just really good execution and then the boss fights they require a little bit of like uh, no copy finesse and you know Shasta is doing that flawlessly but now that we're getting into the, the parts of the run where like that finesse has to get cranked up to 11 we're going to be starting to see some, some glitches with this world uh, towards the end that are going to need some explanation oh yeah um, there's a lot of flashy stuff that is yet to come. This this run only gets more exciting as we go along. I'm it so really excited. does. I have not seen any of these glitches yet. I'm super excited. It's a run that's all about just like very well good execution and like very nice routing in general. It's like little little stuff that really adds up. For instance, we get like these two trains right here. I don't know why staying in two trains is an objective, but you know I, I guess it is. <laughs> I've never missed that one before. What the heck? That's never happened before. Whoa, I said the thing. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. Whoa. I said the thing. Ah. 
All right, but the thing right here, though, actually interesting thing, we're gonna go over here and get hammer, and that's that's important for the end of this level. Keep that in the back of your mind, I guess. Yeah, the end of this world. End of this world, rather, um, sorry. But yeah, just having, just think of it as like putting it in your inventory. Like, we're not using the hammer right now, but it is in our backpack for later. And a lot of this level is just kind of zipping through with the tornado. Uh, we're going to be using that kind of horizontal ability to our advantage towards the end here. Um, it, it, basically, there's an upcoming section on the next screen where you're supposed to, like, use the cone mouth Kirby and, like, reveal some water that sprays you up into the tops of these, like, shipping containers. You're supposed to go through kind of like a puzzle using all of that stuff. Um, but this this busted ability that Tornado has to just cover a giant horizontal distance is going to come in handy right here. So Shoss is going to use it to uh, traverse the level here. We're going to get up the stairs really fast up to this part here. And then you can just jump and Tornado and the shipping crates have a nice little convenient platform for us to land on here. You get one in the cage and then there's another shipping container that's open just off to the side. And the game gives us a free Waddle Dee just for stepping inside of it. So just that's like that. two for free, basically. And then we tornado out of there because if we do that and like use it right here, the icicles just don't come down for some reason. Which that's otherwise really handy. I, did, I didn't know that. That's really cool. There you go. I learned it the other day. Shout out to Poka. Uh, best friend of this game out there in general. Yeah. I, it's... I, I saw I saw us can do that strat while like watching Rampus one time. I think the developers didn't want you to catch them spawning the icicles in like a void in the air. <laughs> That's probably, you're probably right about that. Just like, never mind, no icicles. We don't need those. Yeah. Also, shout out to Poco as well. I know you're commenting on the Japanese restream. You're very good at this game. Keep it up. <laughs> yeah, the amount of dedication from Poco, especially. Um, they're, they're gunning for all the world records and have most of them. So. Yep. Currently have 8%. I think it just got trending today, actually. They had all wall these for a while, and I think it's still have all wall these plus souls. They've not run 100 percent yet, but they also run random, random, random copy abilities and have a really good run in that one too. They're very dedicated to this game, and it's really awesome to see. Very good stuff. Another cool strat I actually uh, saw in Poker's run one time too is one I'm about to do in a second. Nor the way I normally do is to go, it's like go past the cave and like fall right in, but you can do this. Oh, right there. Ho, ho. there we go. Yeah. That wasn't perfect, but that was really good. Still. It cannot be understated how hard the tornado is to control because as soon as you hit a wall, you just like bounce off of it and you're like, you're just going all over the place. Really wild. So the fact that Shasta was able to aim the tornado to get right into that little alcove was very impressive. I'm glad I nailed that first try. It's actually way harder than it looks. <laughs> there it is, ring mouth. There's ring mouth. There it the is. The stuff of nightmares. Of courting, yeah. Because he goes straight into there. There's a like glump in there, but we're not going to worry about him. It's, it's okay. I really like Ringmouth because it's not like Kirby absorbs something that gives him the ability to do something in particular. It's just that the, the ring is so too big for Kirby's mouth. So when he tries to breathe, he shoots these big air bursts. It's so funny. Right there, we got three seafood. That's uh, just a fast one in this world. If you had fire for this level, you can get a cage wall the right below the platform I'm currently on right now. That's pretty fast as well, but, but that, that guy ran out because Tornado turns out to be just a lot faster than World 4, quick fire. Yeah, it then, used to be that fire is like the beginner strat, I think, in my opinion. Fire yeah, provides fast movement. Uh, you know, when we say tornado is faster, tornado is faster, it's probably by a degree of a couple of seconds here and there over the course oh, of the run. That was weird. Um, that was really weird. Just That's taking okay. a little freezy dip there, you know. Yeah, a little ice bath. A little ice bath, because uh, we're talking about fire, right? So you got to cool down. Yeah, uh, true. Definitely, if you're starting the game, like fire is the ability to go with. It's the easiest one to kind of get a hang the hang of and go fast at the same time. And we're right across there, and we're good. You might notice as well, too, in that last level, I went into a, a hole and just jumped right back out. You're supposed to go directly into the load zone down there to get that well D, but for some reason, there's like a little ledge you can just go on. If you just go on that, it still counts it. Are we about to do my favorite level in the entire game, Mr. Shasta? Yep, and it's really hard. Let's do this. Oh, boy. <laughs> Battle of Blizzard Bridge. Now, this one has actually always been my favorite level of the game, even before we knew just how broken it was. Um, this is basically a mini, bo mini boss gauntlet. You're supposed to fight one after the other, after the other, after the other. Um, but as the speed run has gone on, we have been able to cut out those mini bosses. Um, I would say one by one, but it was kind of all at once, really. Yeah, really. 
Um, so yeah, very. It, it's needless to say there is a very cool trick, very difficult trick coming up here. I won't need um, to play it for right now, though, at least. Absolutely. Good it'll luck, take, Justin. It'll take me a little bit. We'll explain it afterwards. There's a lot to explain with it, but it's really cool. Check it out. All right, we got the mix. That's one. That's part one. Then I'm pushing myself over here to the tornado, and here is the cool thing. Ah, a little early. That's fine. We'll try it again. Oh, oh forgot about this. Not. Nah. Oh shoot. No. Uh, all right, we're gonna just. Uh, you know what? I want to show the, the trick in full because it's really cool, and I have a little lean to some estimates. We're going to go back to the wall down and get, and get uh, Tornado real quick. I want to show this. This actually might still save time over doing this normally. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. Yeah, seriously. Bridge yeah. is a long level casually. It's so fun, but it is very long. Yeah. Like, I don't want to not show this trick. I, 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 I'm, I'm doing this. Also, first time we get back here, it'll show us, like, everything. Yeah, we'll grab this tornado. Uh, there's kind of a modified version that you can do without the tornado, but honestly, it doesn't do it justice. We got to see the whole thing. We really got it. It's a big oh, stage, you know? Yeah, exactly. Let's get a round of applause for Shasta. A little, little hype. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. All right, here we go. So second try of this one. We're going for a mix is what we're doing here. And then like afterwards, we're going for a really broken really broken glitch. Yeah, we'll do all the explaining afterwards. Yeah. Because there's a lot to go over. <laughs> yeah. We're on tornado duty. We need to make sure it doesn't despawn again. Yep. That was on me. All right, here we go. Nice, got that. Very good. And over here. Now the hard part. What? Wait. No, 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 hold on, hold on. I messed up. We gotta do that again. <laughs> One more try. Third try is the charm, so, right? Third try is the charm. All right, so we'll explain what happened there right now then, might as well. So that's called a hammer super jump. If you float until Kirby gets tired and then uh, press and hold B and then tap A as soon as the hammer hits the ground, you go really high up. And then I do a, a cool thing. Of, I, I, I not get the right height there, though, which is the problem. And we'll spend the rest after this. I was already so blown away <laughs> by you going so far up. And Incremental I'm like, explanations. Here we go. <laughs> wow, okay. All right, but I need I need this, though. It's, it's for, for the content, for the do culture. For the content, Here we go. Yeah. Luckily, <laughs> this is a brand new that. game, right? This is a brand new game. So the estimate was was set quite high with the expectations that, you know, we could get a time similar to the ones that we were getting at the beginning. So we got a little bit of time to wiggle with. A little bit of leeway here. It's, it's all good. I need to do this. It's important. <laughs> Trust me, the result is very worth it. All right, one more time. All right, that is... And the hard stuff. Up a little early. Don't worry, I got tornadoes time. We're good. You're just building up the hype. Just build up the hype, honestly. Once I get across and when camera changes, that's when we're good, by the way. Oh. Oh, crap. What? Hold on. What? <laughs> Okay, that was weird. I think I flew it accidentally right above Tornado. Yeah, I think that it kind of like, it kind of nudged you back to the middle there a little bit. I really don't know what happened with that one. All right, but this time though, this time though, it's going to be the one. I've got a good feeling about this. I got it. Yeah. You got this. You got this, Shasta. I once spent nine minutes between Metro and Stanford turns at GEQ uh, like four years ago at this point doing one trick for nine minutes in a row and I finally got it. So it's, it's giving me flashbacks to that right now, but you know, it's okay. Just means we get Leon first try. Absolutely. That's, <laughs> That's right. E easily. No pressure. Right. And here we go. Got tornado. I don't know if I got this one. 
I did it. He's All right, up we got, there. We got it. We got it. Let's, Let's go. go. Now, finally. Now we can finally see the beauty of this trick. You can see that he has tornado, yeah. and there is a, an upper section to this bridge that nobody knows about that you can't see, obviously, until you get all the way up here. And because of Tornado's horizontal ability, this is what makes it all worth it, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen at home. Because now we can just skip the entire bridge. Not a single Waddle D save, not a single mini boss fought, and you can just cross the entire bridge without even touching it, basically. We're good. Wow. That's it? Yeah. Round of applause. <laughs> That's really cool that there's an upper path there. It makes you wonder if it was if this if this was going to be originally like other Kirby mini boss stages where there was like a hidden door to well, an alternate set of bosses. It's actually kind of funny that you say that because mm -hmm. there is. There is actually. There is an Easter egg in that in that level. I'm not going to spoil it for the folks at home. You're just going to have to look for yourself. But um, if you do find it, you actually get a harder version of the bridge where you don't fight just one of every mini boss. You fight two. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. I've never done it casually before, but it's. It's awesome. I actually didn't but, know that. I'm surprised I didn't find that. Yeah. It looked oh, it's really very, hard. It's very cryptic. It's very, very I looked hidden. very hard for it. It's pretty tough. I, I will also explain, too, that uh, the, the fact that I sucked up Tornado from that high up is also just a mechanic of the game. That's not even a glitch there. For whatever reason, you can suck up any power you want from any height as long as you're in the air. Yes. So we, we, did, we did the hammer super jump to go really, really high and then sucked up Tornado and then just flew across at that point. That strat, that, that strat in particular is found by Bomb Happy, which has been once again. Yeah, there's so much going on in that level and so many, like, things that you don't use in the run until that very moment to explain. But, yeah, it's it's very cool. For now, though, we're taking, Tornado's taking a little bit of a, a break. I could use Tornado going to World 5, but overall I'm not comfortable doing that currently. So, yeah. And this is a bit of a new strat I'm doing for uh, Team Didi here. Hopefully I get the quad star. Oh, got the triple star. That's still good. And then one more for you. There we go. Nice. And then there's a fire action here. And that's interesting, isn't it? Like, you have Tornado, which is, or not Tornado, sorry. You have, like, the Volcano Fire, which is the upgraded fire. Oh, okay. um, but instead of using Volcano Fire just for the fight all at once, you're using the stars. The no copy is just too busted. They made the damage on it so strong. They really did. That was that strat didn't go perfectly either. I can do more damage going to the second phase here, which would uh, just defeat him a little faster. It's just very hard to do it correctly. That's another focus strat right there. Tap the Coco once again. I learned that one right before the event. It's difficult, but that was good. Funny face, by the way. I didn't even <laughs> see DDD on the screen. Where'd he go? I think the reason normal is so busted is because in this game you can upgrade your copy abilities and they just had to make it so that normal could keep up with the end game. So they just made it so strong. They really did. Did, wish you, did you really just ignore Elflin again? I'm sorry, all right? Oh, I wish I Elflin would just stop doing that, honestly. Like, I wish it'd just go away. Like, ugh. Honestly, you're, you're if Elflin on, disappeared, man. it'd just be, we'd save time. There'd be no notices. There'd be no, you know, we wouldn't get bothered. Wait. Oh, crap, no! Oh, oh <laughs> well, you get what you wish for, I guess. Well, I didn't mean I'm sorry. <laughs> what a shame. What a shame. I can't believe we've done this. We, we lost a friend. My friend! And with that, we actually don't get back to the Wall of Town for the first time ever, after a world. Just Her directly into World 5 with a very epic, epically named level. <laughs> the waste where life began. That is really epic. It's extremely epic for no reason. It's just a normal, like, desert level, too. That's the, that's the weird part. It's clearly where all life began. So what is it, the Garden of Eden? Possibly. For all we know. This isn't what it looked like in the Bible. Now we're going over here, and this game has a great sense of humor. There's that squishy <laughs> enemy right there who's like an octopus, and there's a bunch of takoyaki balls around. Oh uh, my gosh, it's squishy. so morbid. I love it so much. Yeah, if you don't know, takoyaki <laughs> is a dish made out of, octop of uh, octopus. Yep. So. They're delicious, by the way. Very delicious. Crispy little, like, doughy octopus balls. Yeah, World 5, I think, in particular, really shines from its execution. Especially a fire, it's very good. It's very good, and like you'll save a lot of time here if you just like play it better. Really, I think okay. honestly, yeah. And World Five is the one that's kind of like right in the middle of like being close to the end of the game, but not being World Six to have like that extra level. So we're collecting a lot of Waddle Dees that seem really slow, like this one for example. Uh, it's just because there aren't really very many options available to us in World Five, so we do have to go out of the way for a lot of the slow ones. Yeah, it's, it's it's unfortunate because there's a lot, because like there's a lot, it, there's some sequences of, of World Five we like they're just like really really slow that you think you can skip, 
and they still, it seems slow, and that's because they actually are in the end, but there's nothing we can do about it. Also, fun fact, you can go into the hotel back there. Yeah, you see that little hole in the fence? Yep. Yep. It's just it's just a fun little room. It has it gives a bunch of treasure and has a mini coins game. and capsules. It's it's really fun. But I didn't know that for a long time. I actually found that on my first playthrough, but I missed all the oh. howl rooms. I missed the howl rooms, but I found that. The howl rooms are more are more, more cryptic for sure. We'll show that off after the run. Thank you for doing for that incentive, by the way. But yeah. And how are we doing on that incentive? Did we meet it already? We did, yeah. We, we did. We met it during Wario. We uh, did, and Wario. we're super, super close to Pokemon Snap. By the way, we are less than three hundred dollars. True. Ooh, let's less get it than three hundred dollars. Let's, let's do that right now. I'm down. Yeah. A little fun fact, by the way, you can skip this entire room right here using Hammer Super Jump by just going to the left over there. But we don't do that because we need fire for movement for the rest of the run. And also there's two baldies again in this room that are end up being very, very fast in the end. Yeah, that honestly is one of the, the most commonly asked questions, like when the oh. Hammer Super Jump was discovered. It's like, well, why don't you just use the Hammer Super Jump to just jump over a lot of things? Uh, and the answer is that, like, by the time that we have Hammer, it's it's hard to switch between that and our better movement choices. Also, also shout outs to the best power up in the house. Shout out to Optimal Sleeping. If I move here, I sleep. I fall asleep like not as fast. And also, I match out of uh, <laughs> the bubble there. Are you telling me this game has Optimal Sleeping? It does have Optimal Sleeping. It's great. <laughs> then we get two. We get two baldies real quickly right there. So it's worth it's worth the detour. It really is. I got paranoid every time after that hidden wall D, and every time I saw a sleep enemy by a chair for the rest of the game, I was like, I, I have to. I have to go to sleep now. <laughs> they to might see. give me another one. They might give me a waddle D. <laughs> I need it. I lost a lot of time to that on my casual playthrough. I slept a lot. Not big fan of these Totengas right here. They like to get in my way whenever I go near them. Yeah, and they're one of the few enemies in the game that do not just kind of get obliterated by your fire boost. Like, they will block you. Um, which with all of this poison around, and the poison is another, it's a double whammy. You'll get knocked back by these Totengas, but then you'll also get knocked into the poison, which is a 100% guaranteed drop rate for your power-up, uh, which, you know, is just, it's just a bad time. And also the power-up the poison, it just immediately disappears. Yes. This level is actually like, you know, Shasta's just kind of breezing through it right now, but it is a very scary level to lose your power-up in. It really is, especially right here. It's actually a little bit of a skip with it. It's a little movement skip that we can do. Just we go over here and then two fireballs, then up here and bam. This skips using nice. drill to get in, into there. Saves a good amount of time over doing that really. But the most important thing is that it makes this wall D, that's who we're about to get right now, actually really fast. This is a, a long detour for Wall D, but in the end, because of just how scarce oh that, that was weird. Because of how scarce World 5 is for Wall Ds, this ends up being overall just faster. Like, it's about a 40-second detour, like, optimally, just for these two. But, like, the replacements are about 30 seconds each, so what are we going to do? And it's a two-for-one. Oh. You get a hidden Waddle D and you get one in a cage. And I get corn and milk. That's what spawn around me. <laughs> and we get Pokemon Snap! Yeah! yeah. Let's go! Let's Perfect go. segue. So <laughs> Bonus game number one. Yeah, more content. Good work, everyone. It. We need the content. <laughs> that was a really fun great. one. Y'all gonna enjoy that one after this. I, I think, think that donated. deserves a Professor Oak. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Shasta, you're crushing all the incentives this run. The only one we need to do now is 100,000 by the end of the run. Let's yes, do it. We are over 93,000. So we are very close to that. Let's definitely hit that right now. Let's get in get there, y'all. Let's do it. I am challenging anyone that if he does get Leon Gar skip first time, like match my fifty dollars I'm dropping <laughs> on that. Double that. Do like a hundred at least. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna be on my seat when I get that one, if I get it first try. If you're listening, Yeti, that's when you drop the $100,000 donation. That's true. <laughs> true. <laughs> Speaking of the Yeti, you should also buy some shirts from the Yeti. All, all contributions go to uh, the charity itself. Doctors Without Borders. That's yeah. right. And a little dodge roll here for the fans. Now, if y'all want donation prompts real quickly, speaking of donations, uh, this level, we actually, uh, the one wall we get is getting three ice cream cones, which ends up being the fastest one by a lot in this, in this one. Yeah, so, how, about, how about we do a $5 hype train, or a $5 donation? I guess we don't have hype trains uh, here. I guess we could do a hype train in the chat, right? We can still do that. We can still do that. $5 donation train for what your favorite ice cream is. Please tell us your favorite ice cream. My personal favorite is uh, Tropical Cookie Dough. 
love that one. Coffee, yeah. cookies, and cream. Coffee, cookies, and cream. Oh, Respectable. man. Respectable. That, that's a good choice. I like tiger. Whenever I say tiger, Ooh. people don't know what tiger is, but like orange ice cream with black licorice swirled through it. No, you are no, a man you of culture. It, oh, it's it's surprisingly good. You got to balance out that licorice flavor somehow, and orange does it really mm. good. I need, the, I need some right now. What's your favorite <laughs> kung fu? I love a good like chocolate peanut butter or Ooh. or cookie dough Ooh. as well. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Cookie dough's so good. I had a caramel. Wrong. I had a caramel cookie dough from Dairy Queen earlier. Did not regret that. I might make this. No, I'm gonna still go for this anyways. You can skip the cycle there entirely by just like doing a well timed attack. Jump around the corner and all that. Yeah, very simple love overall. That's just a second location of a live mall, I guess. <laughs> like staff side or something? Yeah. Yep. We go around like, not around the main side of it at all. We just go around like the, the back rooms, I guess. I gotta wonder what happens for a live mall to get split in half and moved across continents like that? That's true. I didn't think about that, honestly. <laughs> like, why is the staff side in the desert like 500 miles away? Yeah, because like a after uh, World World 4, we just went across another island entirely. It's like, what happened? That's some colonialism right there. <laughs> why is this here? <laughs> How did I get here? Now it's time for one of my personal favorite levels as well, Moonlight Canyon. It has one of the best songs of the game, too. Can't, I couldn't agree more. This yeah. stage is wonderful. It's so good. Starts off with just a big vertical section. We're going to go skip a little bit of it by just doing uh, these over here. And then we're going to get some, uh, we're going to get three posters in this level. First one being right here. This level has a ton of hidden waddle -dees that we're going to save. A lot of them. Like most of the ones in this level we're going to save pretty much. Again, that's just how it turns out because of routing. There's just not a whole lot of the other levels that are really fast sometimes. I like the pity light bulb it gives you if you leave behind the light bulb you need. It's like yeah, it's the game actually does a really good job of that in general. Um, you wouldn't notice it casually um, because you would be like, oh, I need this mouthful mode, obviously, where we need it to traverse the level. You can see the light bulb is like literally popping up in Shasta's Wherever. face. There it is. Just everywhere. Uh, it, the same is true of like anytime you need like a ring mouth to progress or anything like that. The game is the game gives you a pity one if you leave it behind, which is really nice of it. And then we're gonna go right over here, and this should be smooth, no correctly. Yeah, look at that. Nice. That was well done. Yeah, very yeah. good. Get that poster there, and then immediately get the wall that spawns in when you do the light bulb right there. All right, if you guys have any animated uh, dance emotes in the chat, this is the perfect time to break them this out is the right here. Perfect time. This song is really good. You know when like a developer puts in a random, really good song in the middle of a level for no reason, on just a random level like this? Yeah, this is that. This, this is that one. right there. Yeah, absolutely. Like that jam. It's too good. And while they were there, we skip going up and around, just using some clever fire movements. And then last poster is right here. It's a strange place for a poster. No one can see that. Three, four, and five. Right on top of the ladder right here. I'm going to go for a Strats up Pokedew once. We're going to do an instant suck on this arch mount. I don't get it. That's fine. You have to be directly underneath it. It's really precise. That's all good, though. But here we go in the Archmouth section. We're just going to grab another Cage Waddle D at the end of this segment. But again, it's another auto scroller, so maybe we got some more donations. Oh, I got you. All oh, right. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we have $50 from Ryan Tatum saying, if we can't save the animals in this game, can't we at least save the blueprints? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, we saved the Waddle D. Is it close enough? I don't know. Yeah, right? I know, right? We did have that follow-up uh, follow $5 donation from Build Sing. Excellent. Boy, Elf Kung Fu, as promised, here's $5. So there you go. There you go. good nice. on them to, uh, to get that in there. Um, we have a $50 donation from um, Jean Vuitton. There we go. It says, hey, Shasta, it's so great to be seeing one of the greatest Kirby games of all time being speedrun after only four months. You and the community have been working so hard on this game, and to see it at SGDQ is a rightful payoff. Twenty-five more dollars if Shasta and the couch gives their best Kirby impressions. Bye, woo, bye. You can do like a hi. <laughs> hi. 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 My voice, my voice is too deep for this. <laughs> what's, I'm what's, doing my best. What's the little noise that the Kirby makes when he uh, saves the one cage waddle D? Oh yeah, he goes like hi. E. I love the E. The E. <laughs> now that I've pointed it out, you're going to hear that every time. Every yep. time, but it's the best. <laughs> it really is. Coming up is 
Uh, just my favorite boss. Not necessarily my favorite boss fight, but my favorite boss in the game. We got Silly Dillo coming. He's up just so silly. He's just a silly little guy. Yeah. <laughs> When I saw the, his silhouette, I thought he was going to be like one of those fire dragons from like Yoshi's Island. And yeah. then when I saw Silly <laughs> Dillo, I was like, wait, this is a thousand times better. Yeah. <laughs> I love this guy. He's actually kind of important to the plot, too, because he draws all the wine posts that you see throughout the game, the ones that we've been destroying a few times throughout the run. He's like trying to essentially badmouth Elfling and Kirby, telling everyone just to like, you know, go after them because they're criminals or something for some reason. I tried to destroy all the wanted posters in the pre-fight room, thinking that there might be a Waddle D for it. Same. <laughs> Same here the first time. Oh, waste of time. Yeah. Just in case, you know, just in case. A little bit along the way here, though. There's a all lot these right here. Look at them. There's, there's a lot of them. Yeah, just a few. There's some off-screen. Like, unless you do, like, a hammer jump, you wouldn't be able to get them. But you're silly to it right here. He's just so silly. Look at him. Just, he's just such a silly little guy. So this fight consists of three different phases. The first phase, uh, he's just kind of trying to intimidate us. He's walking towards us with his cage and trying to lock us in the cage. And when that doesn't work, he breaks the stadium open and brings us to phase two. Phase two, he's just going to kind of jump back Oops. and try and do this rolling attack towards us. So Shasta's just going to be trying to keep the fire going as long as possible. The cool thing about the fire abilities is that um, if you damage with fire, it kind of does like a residual attack over time, so they're, they're continuously burning. Um, and it's really important that Shasta doesn't lose the fire ability, otherwise it cancels that out as well. Yeah. Um, so you're seeing Shasta making sure that he's well guarded or dodges out of the way before he gets hit every time. Now just remember his, his uh, little friend right here is going to dodge out of the way. Uh, they also block uh, damage, so I got to be careful of that too. I did not get the right manipulation of his movement though, so I'm going to get hurt here, I think. No, we're good. Okay. Okay. That was a little weird. Didn't do as much damage as I was hoping, but yeah. Also, there's a little sweet spot, like right underneath him there. We just yeah. throw his, uh, his friend. Oh, I, uh, that's not good. Okay. We'll be okay. Not the cleanest silly deal, but hey, you know, we're out, we're out here. We're still out. pretty quick. Still pretty quick. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what? That was the best silly deal of my life. You don't know that. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> It was absolutely as intended. Absolutely. We just wanted to see more Silly Dillo. There's no one here left telling me not to get the blueprint, by the way, except for you two. Except, you yeah, that. us. Uh, <laughs> why didn't you get the blueprint, Shasta? I thought you loved your friends. Fast! <laughs> True. You can't argue that. <laughs> yeah, Elflin's not here to tell us any, any different, um, but we do have to go save Elflin. So that's what we're going to do. World 6. Now, we're about a, a, an hour and 17 minutes into this speed run. Estimate is 150. Okay. It's actually pretty wild how much of this run consists of just the last world alone. It's very long. It's about a third. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It really is. It's all really cool. It's very cool. <laughs> So this is our last Waddle D Town intermission. So Fu, if you've got donations, this is a perfect time. Great, I am here for that. Uh, $25 from the Sound Defense, who says, like I said earlier, I have to donate whenever Shasta is running. Good luck from my parents' house. <laughs> Thank you, Sound Defense. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, okay, all right. I apologize in advance. This is a $15 donation from MCN Mike saying, always love watching GDQ every year, especially when I can make donations that are well-rounded in puns. <laughs> I sure hope the runner doesn't feel waddle defeated during this run. I would go bonkers if that happened. <laughs> Best of luck to the runner. You DD deserve a good run. Make it a woofy pun, oh. please. Oh, missed that <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> It's fine, though. Thank you very much for the donation and all the puns. <laughs> Always love those. And uh, there we go. There's another uh, Wild E right there we get. Last one, we kind of just like puff into that into that Wild Aloofy and it just goes off the side into some lava. I honestly thought that was just like such a satisfying but also incredibly cruel way to get it done. It's just like poof, off the platform and then you boil in the lava below. He's fine. Bad. He yeah. survives. He'll be okay. He walks it off. Just a flesh wound. All the bosses in this game canonically live. They, they walk it off. Th that was a very nice room there, too. If you all correctly yeah. save uh, a good amount of time in that cycle, that was very clean, that's it. Yeah, Shasta just, I mean, the the elegance of it. it was just so quick and so easy and so breezy that you don't even, didn't even really look like 
he was doing anything out of the ordinary at all. But yeah, that room was done on a cycle and it was done very well. There's a reason Dangerous and I really keep bringing up the vertical movement management in this game because it is really oh. difficult and Shasta makes it look so easy. I'm doing my best out here. <laughs> I put a lot of hours in this game since it came out. A lot of practice, a lot of runs. You gotta show us the switch oh. user log. I will. I can show it after this. I also have, I have more in Smash Ultimate, honestly. <laughs> But this game is like for the most of any game I've run Switch so far, I'd say. Yeah, 6 1 is very fun. That's, that's one of those levels, once again, it's all about just your execution at the end of the day. If you don't, like, you can save time on the, uh, the cycle earlier, but it's all about you just like moving faster, not balking the stuff, and just like going fast. You go fast to beat the game faster. Fun fact. <laughs> There's a lot of high stakes stuff in World 6. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see a lot more of like the glitchy part of World 6 towards the end, but like a lot of the levels just along the way are very execution heavy, and if you get it, you get it. And sometimes if you don't get it, then you're in big trouble. Um, and this world is a very good, this level in particular is a very good example of that in this first room. Just is going to be going for something, uh, doing a little bit of ability juggling. Um, we'll see how that goes as we get up to the top of this tower here. Oh. oh, I missed that. I, I need that for uh, a wall of real quick. Gotta get your meaty meals. Gotta get those meaty meals. They're delicious. Why you can't have so any pudding many... if you don't eat your meat, Mr. Shasta. True. Why are there so many Waddle Dees for stealing food? I don't know. Kirby's a hungry lad. All right, but right here, though, we're gonna get fire. We're gonna get rid of fire and then get crash. Because there's a wall D for getting the. I might, I might go off. No, we're good. Okay. There's a wall D for defeating uh, Wild Frost right here with Crash. And yeah, grabbing Crash is a lot harder than it looks. Uh, had to put fire on those breakable platforms because if you get too far away, then fire will disappear. And now, using that verticality yeah. trick again, uh, fire was well below Kirby in that situation, but because you can suck up power-ups from so high up, uh, we're able to grab fire before it disappears. That was very well that executed. Was Can we get a round of applause? Cool yeah, please. Yeah, I, made that, look, I made that look easy. It's not. <laughs> that, that is way harder than it looks. Absolutely. I think That's the most good. said word in this speed run is easy. Makes it look easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in that context, yes. Yeah, for now, we actually can't go you know, fire over these wide gordos here. Shouts to the wide gordos for being just a fun enemy design. I love them so much. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can't fire over them. It'll, the game will just block if you're doing that every time. And I was promised, I promised to go for a really cool strat right at the end of this level here. So I'm going to go for that. Oh, are you going to do uh, boatless? Uh, uh, don't spoil it. Yes, I am. <laughs> you're supposed to use a boat right here normally, but I'm not going to do that. We're just going to do this because it looks really cool. I'm just going to keep on flowing for a bit until I start losing heights. And I'm just going to spam B. And this looks really awesome. I love this. This, ang this angle is really cool. It looks like I'm not going to make it. It does. But no, you've got this. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> that was cool. You know what the unfortunate thing is? That's actually losing two seconds of using the boat. <laughs> but it's so cool, though. It's worth it. It's, it's worth, worth it. it. Just the aviance of that dramatic music as Kirby floats over this massive lava pool is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pay attention to my wall decal right here. I need a certain amount by the time this level is done. I'll just, uh, I'll just say that, I guess. Should be in the bomb right right there. But this is also my favorite level that we do in the run now. Everything, we, Every strat we do here is just really, really cool. I, I love it a lot. Oh, wait, no, it's, it's only for the world. Never mind. OK. It'll be OK. It'll be fine. Don't we'll, worry. we'll make it work. We'll make it work. So talking about make it or break it, uh, this level has one of the achievements is don't get squished by anything. Um, and you're going to be, you're going to notice as soon as we get into this level that there's a lot of things that want to squish us. Um, so we have to make sure that that doesn't happen. Otherwise, we'll be down one of our Waddle Dees uh, to get to the, the boss fight that we need. That includes this first room as well, too, which I learned the hard way in the PvP run one time. That's right, yeah. And now you can, you can go up here like this and then go up and around for whatever reason. and. It just works. You just break the break the blocks from above. That's yeah, super you're supposed to you're supposed to push a button and open up this passageway, and then there's some wooden crates uh, within that passageway. Um, but you can just kind of go over the top like that, no problem. And that was really good there too. We should get a fast load. Uh, yeah, there we go. Cool. Nice. We got we got to go into the control room there just very briefly, and then go directly back out, and then go right into the loads. If you do it correctly, fast load and speed. Uh, yeah. 
and not gonna crush right here. It made the right cycle, thankfully. This room is one of my favorites, I think. It's all horizontal, but it's obviously like a little free like action here and there. Gotta get his cup of coffee here. It's the last one he needs for that wall of teeth. Very good. And then Another if we part correctly, we're gonna land right on top of the steel block. Oh, right, right on top of it. No one saw that, don't worry. <laughs> and then, bam, smoothly right in there. That's really now, good platforming. And now, this is, this is a new strat I learned that is, ends up being pretty fast. So we, you don't lose your power on lava. You don't lose it at all on lava. You just go straight over here, right past all these holes in the wall, get the cone. And then we're just going to go directly into here. Oh, I almost got that. That's fine. And bam. That skips having to wait for the invisible wall to go away if you just did not do that at all. Which, used, which was the old strat for a while, but now we, now we just we just don't wait there anymore. Very nice. That one looks Very so good. cool. I love it. <laughs> now, remember way, way, way back at the beginning of the run, I was saying, you know, the boss fights, they don't really matter how many Waddle Dees we save, except for kind of, sort of, maybe they do. Uh, we're maybe. paying attention to how many Waddle Dees we get in boss fights, specifically because um, of this moment right here. We're going to actually go back to the Waddle Dee town right now. And if we did collect enough Waddle Dees in the boss fights, then a shop is going to open up for us. And this shop has ability drinks for us to purchase. Now, you might be thinking, going back to Waddle Dee Town to buy things that are going to, like, help a little bit? Like, that, that seems so far out of the way. It seems like I'm it's going to take afraid. too much time. I think we're good, but I'm a little bit afraid. Crossing our fingers uh, here. Yeah, we're good. We got okay, it. It's yeah. Okay. Cool. Fine. But um, what these drinks do is they buff up your attack power and they can buff up your speed. Um, so we're going to be buying a couple yeah, of those. Yeah, I have exactly number 45. Okay. <laughs> you had exactly the right amount. Yeah. Normally, I have a few more than that. I didn't get a whole lot from the bosses in, in this run. So like, I was a little concerned about that one. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I. But we're good. I, right. I have like a humiliating amount of resetted runs to the fact that I didn't have enough Waddle Dees coming up to this point. So it's it's a good thing that we've got some. Yeah, if you, if you do not do that correctly, uh, any one more Waddle Dee, you have to be an entire level in order, in order to get it. So that's only when it stays. It's like right to be the level. That's right. You can't just go in and get one and then immediately exit out. You got to do the whole thing. Every the, good, the whole enchilada. Yeah. All mission progress in this game, like any Waddle Dees, any collectibles, anything, you have to finish the level to get anything at all. Yeah. So instant reset, of course, if you don't. If, if you're missing one, then it's kind of just game over for you. Yeah, for now we're just stacking up on two speed boosts and two attack boosts. Like Danger said, this seems slow, but overall this does actually save like over a minute, like, like all the way through until the end of the run. It actually ends up being really, really fast. Yeah. But for now, I'm getting only the one attack boost and using it and keeping another one until way later. Yeah, the inventory slot is very handy. Um, and it's actually, like, the speed boosts are helpful, and we're, we're buying them because we're going to be moving faster with their help. But the real star of the show is those attack boosts, and you're going to see why in this upcoming level here. Yeah, so this is, this is the level where we're supposed to fight three bosses we fought previously. First one being Goromondo here. So this is the level that has that strat you were talking about, Shasta, right? The one that yeah. I haven't seen yet? Um, it, it's on the second boss here, on Silly Dillo. It's very, very cool. I won't spoil it until we do it, I think, honestly. Right. But I did spoil it before the run for them, so... It's okay, I, I had my eyes closed. I was talking to the producers, I wasn't paying I attention. I was not paying attention. So I, enough, I'll be just enough. as surprised. The, yeah. I mean, the fact that you're going to get crashed right now, already surprising enough for me, right? So... Yeah, we all, so down that passageway is another hidden wall D by just going there. But the end of the passageway is Crash, which if, with the attack boost will one-shot kill Gormondo. Just like that. He's gone. See ya. <laughs> Didn't even see him. See, I told you he was fine, though. He survived getting frozen three times. True, true. He'll be back. He'll be okay. I think there's a figure that says that Meta Knight has killed him like 30 times in the arena, and he just keeps coming back anyway. <laughs> I respect the resilience, honestly. I, re I really do. That's my goat. Yeah, with speed boost on, on, on Carby as well, too, we can just kind of make this jump as well. Take just a few skip. seconds. I love that the speed boost works on Carby. What a nice little thing they did. Same. It's great. But that only works because of the speed boost? Yep. Oh. Very cool. All right, so here we go. This this is the strat right here. It's really cool, but also really hard and precise. Like, extremely precise. Like, I, I might fail this, and I don't know why it's sort of precise. So we're going to use Drill for this fight, which is very unique. And we're going to immediately start by just doing this. Ah, yes! Ooh, let's go! Boy. Wow! Yes, dude! What? Yeah. That is so much. It did a lot. 
So from what from what I know about this, the fir the more you draw there, and the more distance you, you cover with drill, the more damage you do once you actually circle it around all the way. That makes sense. Does it and, add and, and hits or? It was three hits normally for that. The more like the further you go as well. So like the, fir the essentially you do more hits, the further like the the longer your, your line is really, and then it also has more damage the longer your line is. That's that's my that's what I think is how it works. That makes sense. Shout out to Dark or Yellow for finding that strat. It's really cool. We d There's also a way to do that on, on on the boss of this world, but we don't... I'm not doing that right now on the run. That one I did not learn before the events. Forgo moves a ton. It's probably very difficult. It is very, very difficult. Yeah, I don't need, uh, I don't need drill anymore. It's just going to get rid of it right there. But for now, though, we're going to do another uh, wall D by not getting damage on Clover Lion, which we got we got a setup for. Hopefully, I do it correctly. This starts out like the second phase of the original boss fight where you're getting the swords thrown at you. So same exact strategy here. Suck up the swords, spit out two stars, Bam. fight is over. Nice. Just, just, sit, like, just a second like that. Very well done. It gives us a wall D for doing that. Very good. Dodging that jump move always feels so scary. And so, yeah, I mean, that was a perfect display of why the attack boost is just so, so, so effective in the speedrun is because the bosses just get melted away immediately. Now, the rest of this level, it was, this level was so exciting in general, but the rest of this level was is just all uh, Roller Coaster Kirby here and just avoiding stuff. I We're love not, Roller Coaster Kirby. <laughs> we, we used to get the wall at the end of this level now, but now we don't off for, off for another one that's uh, a little bit faster. But uh, for now, if you want to get any donations until we get to the final level after this, then yeah, yes, the please, yes, please. We just hit a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 Yay! I was like, it's an auto scroller. Good. Hopefully, I can <laughs> let everybody know. <laughs> I was so excited, and what got us there was an anonymous four thousand dollars donation. Wow. Yay. Let's go! Hey. Thank you, anonymous. I know. So thank, thank you so much. <laughs> I know. They're loving this run. I'm telling you. All of this is 100k hype. 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 Thank you, audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll leave you hanging. Don't worry. <laughs> How about a really quick $50 donation from Kirby, who says, "Boyo, boyo, boyo, boyo." Honestly, we can do a few more. There's, there's also a little Oscar segment to get in this next level. Let's do a few more. Oh, sure. I have plenty for you. Um, <laughs> we actually got a lot of uh, ice cream answers. Yo, <laughs> hey, yeah, go for it. Rapid fire, rapid fire. Okay, $50 from Perplexpert, which is an awesome name, who says, Agreed. In this household, we love Kirby and the Forgotten Land co-op and mint chip ice cream, but it has to be green. Let's go, Mr. Shasta. We also have a $5 donation from Stairmaster, who says... Hey, Stairmaster. Yeah, who says, My favorite ice cream flavor is yes. <laughs> Good luck, Shasta. <laughs> Loving the run and super happy to be watching from the crowd again. Should we hey, one more? Go. One more, yeah. One okay, more $5 from a Woofie. Who says, yes. Wow, like from the game, that's wild. Yeah. Uh, who says, I love to mix in my own ice cream toppings. My favorite is vanilla with graham crackers, frozen mango, and raisins. Oh, Good luck on the Leon cool. Gar skip really and good. shout outs to the Kirby with the screaming a Woofie inside. <laughs> <laughs> I learned the other day you just like bonk here. While you're waiting, like this. I love doing that. You make them bounce on this on the stage. That's my favorite thing to do while you're waiting. Um, so it, we had some boss fights, and now this is kind of like a gauntlet level. This is like you know we we are infiltrating the boss's arena right now. So um, things are very tense. Uh, it, this just so happens to probably be my favorite level of the entire run. You can see right out of the gate we're grabbing hammer, and if you've been paying attention to this speedrun, you know exactly what that means. So the first part of this stage we're going to be going through, um, we're going to be just kind of clearing oh, the enemies, okay. doing some Ooh. platforming, Never. avoiding the lava as best as we can. We're good. I got my bearings. We're good. <laughs> And upcoming here is going to be a barrier, and you can see a door at the top of the st of the the way there. Um, but instead of going through the door, Shasta is going to well, he's going to do oh, a hammer sp uh, a hammer space jump instead. It's true. Let's see if I can get this one. Uh, I think I got that, that might one. Be good. That was looking pretty good there. Should be able to get up here. You know what? I'm confident we're going to just like do this. There, we there go. it is. Very nice. nice. Oh, I got right there. Perfect. <laughs> So you can use that hammer space jump to kind of go over the top of that door. It's supposed to like lower after you do the puzzle within that door, but you can skip it entirely. And that by itself saves like probably Huge. over a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. That room's so long. You go all the way to the end of a long hallway and back. 
Yeah. But wait, there's more. Unfortunately, you can't do it with this one without like doing some really precise and kind of uh, glitchy things that don't even really save time. So we are going to go into this room. Um, but don't worry, that doesn't mean we're not going to do a hammer space jump. We're actually going to set up for another one right away here. Yeah, this one's harder than the other one because you start on an elevated platform and then go down. So I can do it. Ah, a little bit off. It's different. That's okay. Time There's normal. really no penalty to trying this one again. So. Mm -hmm. That oh, looks great. Looking good. Yes, yeah, there nice. we go. Nice. Right. And bam. Beautiful. And now it's time for a mix. Here we go. Good luck, Shasta. Thank you, thank you. This one's a little tricky. Got it. Nice. Nice. Hey, okay, let's go. Yeah. Those mixes are a little bit harder than you think. So the idea of the mixes is that it kind of just takes all of the, the copy abilities that you've gathered up to this point. Like, think of the inventory that we were mentioning earlier with the hammer. Um, and it just kind of puts them on a roulette wheel. Um, but it does slow down a little bit. So you kind of pick what ability you want. But that doesn't make it any less nerve-wracking because you only get one shot. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do uh, one more set of donations? We have one more Arc Mouth segment. I'd say so. I can anytime, anytime we'd like donations. Let's do it right now. <laughs> All right, one hundred and forty-five dollars from drink dealer Waddle D. Hey Kirby, since you're such a great customer, here's a dollar for every Waddle D it took to open up my shop. Gotta go fast and hit hard, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. We also have five dollars from Just Call Me Geo. Oh, what's the Geo? <laughs> I'm literally donating to make Kung Fu say, and just so you know, I, I can speak English and French, not Spanish, but it, I think it says, y ya hemos llegado in the honor of the amazing Latino-American Spanish localization of this game. Go Shasta, let's keep selectively saving those Waddle Dees. <laughs> selectively, yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Gio. Gio also runs for every game, too. He's, he's really cool. But here we go. Now we're at, at the end of the level. This tortilla in the background loves to spit stuff out. Yeah, as you can oh. see right there, almost on the snipe. Now, talking about levels that make it or break it, this is the very last level before the very last boss fight that requires Waddle Dees to unlock. And it just so happens that one of the Waddle Ooh. Dees we collect is okay. not falling in the lava as Cone Mouth Kirby. So if at any point Shasta falls in the lava with this, co this, uh, Mouthful mode, uh, then we lose. Uh, no, we lose what? out. It we lose out on a Waddle D. It would happen on this run. Of course it would. Mm. You know that's never it happened would. before. That has literally never happened before to me. <laughs> like, there's, it's not enough, not, not much room there for that to happen. But somehow it happened. Mm. And there's no other Waddle Ds again, fortunately. So we have to go back to the level. Of course. I knew yeah. you wanted me to just read more donations. That's it's right. Okay, you that's can yeah, admit exactly. it. It's all right. Sir, fast wow. level to go <laughs> into. Fir literally the first time that's happened to me. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Oh, well. I wonder if you could do maybe a different level. I'm, so my, my thought process is 2-2, is two, two, the drill, one right at the end. That's my thought process. Okay. That's not a bad idea. Because there's a drill maybe right in front of it, so you can just get that real quick. And, I, and that'll go back to the wall you're to crash. Yeah, my uh, my immediate thought was maybe the shards in 6-3 as well. I, could, I don't know. Could work. I don't really know That's which level is longer, but... I think that one level in original wasteland uh, with the, uh, the falling pillars is like only three rooms long, too, if there is one in there. Yeah. Yeah, you got plenty of options as a backup, yeah. But, you know, uh, you, you do hate to see that. You know what? I'm going to go for shards, like you said. I think that'll be a safe one. That way you can keep your crash, too. Oh, wait, I forgot about crash. <laughs> uh, wait, there's also fire in this level. You know what? See a crash. Have a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, though, the first time it's happened to me, like, oh, my goodness. Look, That's all right. Everyone yeah. just wanted more Kirby. That's a heartbreaking. Kirby's good. I love Kirby. That's a heartbreaking <laughs> run render for sure. But, you know, this is all for charity. This is all just to showcase. Um, and, you know, we set our estimate pretty high, so we got we got time. I've 100% lost a run that way, by the way, so don't yeah, worry. Yeah, same. Me yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to see me go for PB and steps this game, you should follow me at twitch.tv slash MRN Squash Shasta as well. That's where I'll be doing runs and going for even further. I'm currently top five in this game. So, yeah. There's my little plug. <laughs> But for now, uh, say donations while I get all these shards. Oh, yeah, we gotta absolutely. Wait for the again. <laughs> all right, we have a twenty-five dollar donation. This is from the John Vuitton again, who says, uh, or Jean Vuitton, oh, in there. saying, up in the oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, right. here's to a great foil from the couch and Shasta, as promised. Here's an extra twenty-five dollars. We have a twenty-dollar donation from. P -p 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 
Are you? <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Another delightful Kirby run by Shasta. You're doing great. Thank great you, th thank you. <laughs> great job to everybody contributing to this event. Good job with the commentary as well. Keep it up. You make the run look waddle easy. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like that. I'll, I'll give you that one. <laughs> And we have a $65 donation from Itzy, who says, this Kirby speedrun makes the game look so fun, I decided to buy it. Good. Nice. Go. Yes. Yeah. I agree. I think everybody should play this. Um, so, I, for that one. <laughs> so I figured yeah. I'd donate the same amount to help MSF, too. Thanks for all the fun, GDQ. Yes. Good, good, good. I ran through this game, Jeff. Like, my first playthrough of this game was this week, so oh, that I could watch hello. this run. All right, we also have $250 from Nelson, who says, shout outs to the screaming Kirby with Dee Dee inside, and also put this towards the Pikachu riding Articuno picture in Pokemon Snap, which that is actually open at the moment. Very cool. Hmm. Got the one, that's all we need. And now you're gonna see the wall, these flail their arms and destroy, and just explode the entire wall, as they do. They look like Pikmin. <laughs> just a little bit. I think in all wall of these, one, one of the one of the wall of these is like on the lava for some reason. After this, I don't know why. It's very silly. Oh, he's really close. Yeah, that one's really close at least. Yeah. <laughs> They're so cute in this game. All the noises wall of these make in this game are so so cute. It's too good, really. But yeah, I'm gonna go back to wall of these time real quick just to get crash. I'm running out of uh, speed up, which is unfortunate. I don't need it for the rest of the round, but it would save me a little time. All I need is... Oh, I unlocked something? Hello? Tilt and tumble? Oh, no, oh fishing, yeah. Fishing like that. Oh, dude. That's awesome. I love fishing. <laughs> we need fishing in every GDQ run, right? It's true. A little big the cat action. Every every good game has a fishing mini game. This is just facts. That's how you know it's a good game right here. Yeah, I, I, I got a cheat out of Crash earlier. Oh, hello. Yeah, yeah that one, yeah. You Thank won't you. catch a fish for the fans at home. I mean, maybe I could. I could do that real quick. There's a whole showcase after this run. I could catch a fish if you don't do it for it. I'll donate $10 for you to catch a fish right now. We need a little more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I got pay up. <laughs> And there we go. All and, right. and now we're back on track. Yeah. <laughs> this is the beginning of the the end of the game, so to speak. It's going to be more or less a boss rush, uh, broken up a little bit by some cutscenes and by some story and stuff like that. But first one is, uh, you know, a very familiar face. Well, at least on the mask it is. We're gonna yes. fight. We're gonna fight Didi once again. He's actually currently being controlled, like my controlled, using that mask by the main villain of the game, who we see after this. But for now, we got we gotta defeat him. This this strategy here, we we uh, oh, I forgot to actually use this first. We uh, use Crash right now, and then we get Star right here. Uh, I missed the Star right there. <laughs> uh, that's fine. Oh. Wait, no, we're good. There we go. And now I get the hammer, and we move him in a certain way here to hopefully defeat him quickly. This strat I actually just learned recently. There's another strat here where, oh, he didn't stop on the wall. This another strat I learned here, there's also another strat here where you use drill for his fight. I'm not doing that right now. But the idea is that if you actually dodge roll while, oops, that was a little slow actually. Yeah, if you dodge roll out of the way with hammer, we able to do a. Oh, oh, oh. He goes back to center. It's fine. So you dodge roll, then charge. It gives you a double charge. Then it gives you a third charge faster that way. It's very good. DDD down. He's DDD destroyed. Whoa. <laughs> but now we have the. We've been hyping it up this entire speed run. This entire run. Um, With, there's been a lot of big critical errors in this run, two in particular. But if I get this first try, I'm jumping out of my seat. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm so excited. So, if I don't, it's fine. Like, you know, we're, we're here to just have fun. And honestly, I've been having a blast this entire run. So. All of the yeah. incredible execution that's happened in this run and all of the, the precision. And think of, like, how precise you have to be through this entire speed run. Kind of all builds up to this point like five minutes away from the very end of the game where you have to do what is essentially a frame-perfect trick in a laggy environment um, with 
a very specific positioning in order to do what is called Leon Gar skip. Mm -hmm. um, now, fun little fact is that you can actually just skip right by these enemies and go right to Leon Gar himself. And here we go. At home. Need a little sound for this. Yep, That's and see, getting it on the first try is so difficult already, but getting it on the second try is hard because now you've got Leon Gar in your face. Then get there. I gotta, I gotta get the max high of his, of his uh, Hitmer Super Jump here. It's not easy. Oh, I'm gonna get hit here. Yeah. Nope, try to get that one. Try to be a little cheeky with that. There's a, there's, there's a few ways to get out of bounds here. Just some the holes in the ceiling. I got hit. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Up. Up. All right, we're out. We're out. Hold on. Hold. Hold. I think you made it past. I got I to gotta go circle around out of bounds now to get to where the fight I'm going to go to is. So this is Leon Skip right here. Yes. Right at the end of the run, this is 45 seconds first try. It is not easy, but for whatever reason, right below the fight there is, is the loading zone. zone. Next boss. Woo! And look at his beauty. <laughs> I'll still give you $50 for that. That was cool. Thank you very much. So now plot happens in the game. <laughs> so this this is a... So Elphalin, our, our buddy throughout the entire game, is actually one half of a very evil entity that can, like, rift apart dimensions, essentially. And, uh, yeah, it kind of broke free after, after uh, Leon there. <laughs> That's not good. We got we got, we got got to take care of him. We got to keep him under control. And the fight's done because the attack boost we have on Hammer. Very nice. Easy fight. Most horrifying looking boss in the game, also the easiest one. This game has a fear rating just because of that boss, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, so, af so after that, we're now going to... Uh, he, he flies away. Uh, Elphalane actually gets captured by him, and he flies away. And we need to go and save Elphalane and, you know, defeat that god that just spawned in front of us. That can just, just, just distort dimensions everywhere. This part is ridiculous. This final boss fight here is Fecto Elphilus. We're using ice for it because we can actually freeze him with this. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get the, heat, the the skip we can do in the second phase because of my attack boost being a little bit low, but it should be okay. This is still going to be a very easy work with the ice ability anyways. Should be able to at least take care of him on this first phase, if I do this correctly. This part is scripted as well, too. We're just going to do this attack first and then go into the ground like this afterwards. That'll happen every single time. Yeah, using that really busted ability with the ice, basically getting a double tag every second where you're using your shield and the shield kind of explodes when you do your blizzard attack. So you, oh, you just keep getting hit with the ice. Should be enough for you to take him out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we so go. phase one's done. Phase two is a bit more tricky. I'll have to do three hits like that on him. And fortunately, there's a long attack that I cannot skip because I don't have the uh, attack boost for. It is very tight to do it, but yeah. So essentially, there's like a healing phase he does where he just like splits off into three and one of them is the correct one and we gotta like go take care of him before he heals a lot. This part's all scripted. The meteor task can happen every time. This will happen every time. And he's gonna do the same thing again where he stabs his spear to the ground every time. Right here. Got the first ice break, and then, yeah, like Shasta said, not able to get the skip just because we do not have our attack boost here. Uh, this healing attack is always going to happen directly afterwards, um, so this is something that you can prepare for. Michael took him out right here. Actually, that's a little short. But... Okay, just a couple more hits. There we go. Yeah, boss is down. Elphilus is done taking care of. And... Time for some alpha mode right here. I have to use my palm for this one. Shout out to Mario Party 1. <laughs> I think we all do. Yeah, it's a little bit faster. I'm not getting right inputs right now. There we go. And you know, you know how... He, and we're just going to destroy his dimension, destroying God with... Uh, yeah. With a truck. A big truck. A big rig, if you will. I've played Halo 3. Yeah. This is the final sequence of the run right here. Got about two minutes left until the run's done. Just want to say thank you all for watching. Thanks to everyone who's contributed this, to this game in general. I'm going to stop some names on top of my head. Shout-outs to, like, Toranik. Shout-outs to uh, Dark Railo 27 Shout-outs to Poka. Huge shout-outs to Poka. Shout-outs to Bomb Happy, the Swag Master. Shout-outs to Cog, who's uh, very, very, very talented in this game as well, too. 
Uh, who else? Who else? Uh, you say Dark Raiolu? It's a Dark Raiolu, yeah. yeah. Rodzi's really good this game too. Shout out to Rodzi. Sniper as well is really passionate about this run. Found a lot of strats for it. Shout out to Sniper. Shout out to the whole Kirby community in general because they are awesome. I first joined Speedrunning back in 2014 running Kirby Squeeze Squad. And I've been with this community ever since. I've seen it grow. I became a moderator eventually too. And it's just, it's one of the best speedrun communities I've ever been in. If you're ever interested in learning this run right here, there's so many people that will help you out. We have a whole channel on Discord just for, just for like, help with this game. So, highly recommend joining the Kirby Discord. You can find it on, on screen on the comp page for this game, or most every Kirby game except for A-Ride or Epic Yarn. It's on the page for those. So, yeah. Anyways, now here's the final sequence. You see, there's just a giant pop star in the background, which I mentioned, just completely open, trying to go into us. The final boss song is called Two Planets Approach the Roche Limit. That's an obscure astrology term meaning the, the, the speed at which gravity pulls towards two planets together. It's very obscure, it's really cool, and it's very appropriate for the scene right here. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, as you see, uh, we, we took out Elphilus, or we, we took back Elphilin. Elphilin's gonna defeat Elphilus now, and like he's like kind of fading away here. Like, We're about to have the most anime sequence in a Nintendo game ever. Aside from playing Robot Final Boss, where you literally pierce, pierce the heavens with your drill. <laughs> it's great. This is, this is really good. I'm not trying to undersell it. Here we go. Time is not yet, by the way. No, it's not on last input. I'll call it out. And wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's as soon as we go right through him. And time. There we go. <laughs> what a great run, Shasta. It's a bit of a rocky one at times, but you know, we pulled on through and that, and it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, I always at, say at GDQ end, is about the showcase rather than the actual finishing time. You're not going for world oh, records yes. here. You're you're just looking to show the people at home that this game has a lot to offer, you know? Absolutely. It's all about the fun at the end of the day. It's all about showing off a game that you really, really like a lot. And that's what this game is for me. I really, really, really like it a lot. I'm a huge fan of the Kirby series. I've played most of them just over the course of the last like eight years now that I've been spearing them. And like this is like top three for me. This game is just really, really good, to say the least. It also ends very well too. Elfling kind of sacrifices themselves just so he can like just like close the dimensions and stuff. Unfortunate. There's some Bible thumps in the chat for this one. Tugging at the heartstrings. Oh. Thank you, Elfolin. Yeah, such a great, such a great video game, though. No yeah. more blueprints. No more blueprints. <laughs> <laughs> and Bandandy's here. Yeah, our friend the whole time. He was here. Yeah. They helped. They sure did. I just noticed there's the butterfly in the top left. I just noticed mm -hmm. that. See? Was, whatever. <laughs> Kirby fans, or Kirby lore experts, when to see a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna skip past the credits here because I do have the Howl Room showcase right now. So let's just go ahead and go ahead and get that done with. Yeah. So Shasta, what is it? What is a Howl Room? Can you explain that? So a Howl Room is an Easter egg room that you find in this game that uh, the developers put in. There's usually a few of them in the modern Kirby games. I think it started. They started doing it way back in Kirby's Adventure, funnily enough, and it's been just kind of a constant thing. There are three of them in here. They're very obscure to get, but they are very, very cool. And also there's a post game, by the way. You should, it's very awesome. It's one of my, it's really, really fun, honestly. <laughs> and it's anything satisfying. We gotta save Leon, essentially. That's how it goes. You did kind of just leave him in that room, like, all Yeah, long. you just skipped him. Yeah, exactly. Completely. You could have saved him, but you just could've decided, uh, let's just go through the ceiling. Well, go in the Harvest of Foul for this, I think. This file, this file has like all the powers. It's like as level one because I do use the practice sometimes. But I could to put that turn dragon fire for the fans. I could do that. Dragon fire is really cool. Do it for the fans. Oh wait, I don't have. Never mind. That's not just for this one. No, only for this. Hey, I'll, 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 I'll put it for the fans. Why not? Yeah, I got you. Nice. Yeah. So cool. We don't we don't get upgrade any powers because it just takes forever to do that and it's out of the way. Unfortunately. All the time, but yeah. Yeah. So first one, the first Howl room we're gonna show off is one one three. It's a big long like room. 
That's that's, that's the entire level is. We, you saw it before if you were here for it, but right at the very end of it is the Howl Room. So we're just going to go through normally both Dragonfire, I guess. So if you want to make some donations along the way, uh, go for it. Absolutely. We have $100 from Matt Malice, who says, a donation seemed like a good way to spend my birthday money. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> my kids love Kirby, and they're enjoying it, watching it played so skillfully. Oop. We also got $25 from Ease the Squirrel, saying, wanted to donate for Kirby in the Forgotten Land because the poster that my friend Chu drew up is amazing. Wanted to support a great cause and uh, try to snag the poster and watch them draw live on stream. <laughs> And we have a $20 donation from Andrew. Says, thank you, Game Sun Quick, for scheduling Kirby and the Forgotten Land early enough that our five-year-old speedrunner can watch. Yeah, let's go. That's awesome. <laughs> Future will like a holder right there. Start him young. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you so much. Keep it going. We got, we got a few. We got, uh, like, sure thing. Uh, earlier, we also got another $1,500 donation. Hey, yo. Wow. It's amazing. I'm so, people, can't, you all have come, like, oh my gosh, you have done so much during this Kirby run. It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. This is from RJB saying, I won't be able to watch live this year. I love this event and can't wait to catch up on runs when I'm able. <laughs> we have $25 from Dr. Pam who says, <gasps> wait, wait, wait. Did that say Pikachu on Articuno? I didn't even know you can do that. And that is a $1,440 uh, incentive. So, and already at 950, it's, mm, we're already at actually, probably. Yeah, $990, so very close to hitting that. Yep. Let's get it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. All right, so we're right here. So if you go so if you go to Sparkle right on top of the tree, it'll spawn in a Ranger Power right over here. And we're gonna use that. And I'm, I'm gonna do it from the top of the tree as well. I think it's kind of intended. Go back up here, get those melons, because why not? Oh, and then you see in the distance there's that target right above the other one, which allows you to go into that door down there. We hit that target. Let's go over here. We hit that target right now and spawns in a staircase. It goes, it goes straight up. That is really cool. I have not seen these yet. Yeah, it, it's very awesome. My brother was telling me about all these rooms before I, while well, I was on the way here. So, get to see them for the first time. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just hop up, why not? It's way up there. They do not want you to get into that in, by any means necessary. Not sure if you can HSJ up there at all. I'm pretty sure you can't, but who knows. Also, this is, this is the only time in the game where, where the slang effects, this little slime mechanic actually comes into play. Yep. Don't know why. But yeah, here we go. It's just a room that says Hal, and there's a bunch of stuff around it, and music. It's exclusive music to the Hal rooms. They're usually like main level themes or like tile themes of previous games. Not sure what this one is. I'm gonna do a little fun thing here, cause you know why not? Let's see if I can get all this. Up. Uh, yeah, I can do that. And then, bam. Sorry, Woofy. Up. Oh. Wait. And. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I'm glad I nailed that. <laughs> hey, you know what? Why not? We'll get, the, we'll get the capsules here because we're right at the end of the level anyways. We can, we can see what they are in this one. This is, it's, these rooms always have just like a little bit of stuff for you, like some health and like uh, and other fun things. This All sorts of capsules. goodies. Yeah, this this Howl Room is in the level 1-3. This is actually the only place in World 1 where you there can you get the Tornado ability as well as the Hammer ability early. The, other, the only other place that you find them is later in the game, usually like World 2. So any bets on what the figurine is? We had two figurines. Any bets on that? I'm gonna go with. Uh, I think the first one's like usually always Kirby, but the second one was a, was a green, which is level two. I'm gonna go. It usually has like some food items there. I'm gonna go with popcorn. That's what we're doing. Level two. I'm thinking hammer. Hammer. All right. All right. What about you? Um, is there ice cream in level two? I think it's level three. Ice cream might be there. We'll see. We'll, we'll see, see how I guess. it goes. Uh oh, it's actually Cage Wall D. I thought it'd be a Kirby. And then, oh, it's Wild it's Frosty. Wild Frosty. Oh, it's Volume One. I, I guess they're Volume One. My you bad. tricked me. I, I look like a green capsule. That's in my defense. <laughs> to be fair, I was gonna guess Green Coin if it was another level one, so I was wrong. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, so now we're back. In, now we're going back to three, four. 
I think the best part is that's probably the most that we saw of Wild Frosty literally all game. True. The last, yeah. But anytime we encountered Wild Frosty in the regular run, it was just we decimated him, and it was just over immediately. I just realized you oh. have like 26,000 <laughs> coins. That is so many. Yeah, this is my 100% file. <laughs> my 100% file has like 20 coins right now. <laughs> so I... I've uh, done a lot of practice on this one. Let's just say that much. <laughs> Yeah, so the, so the next Howl room is in the second room here. So we gotta, we gotta get there real quickly. With Dragonfire, I can't make any of these fast cycles. With, with Fire and Volcano Fire, I can, though. But Dragonfire has that slow start to it, but doesn't lose height, which is, which is like the main benefit of it. Plus, it does more damage, and the Fire Attack is actually longer. That's why it's so good. You gain height when you hold it for your first one, don't you? Like, just a little bit? I'm not sure. I actually don't know about that. Wouldn't looks, surprise me though. Looks like he like flies up a bit, and then like on the second one he flies down a little bit. It's interesting. It's very cool in general. Oh, hello. Go play Donnie the Wall D here. I got one earlier in the game from not touching the mud, but I'm a rebel now. I'm touching the mud. I'm sorry. Very scandalous over here. But yeah, over here in this room there is the next one, and uh, this is very short car segment, but. For whatever reason, if you wait 86 seconds on this car segment, you can get the Hell Room uh, to show up. It's oh. ace, it's, so it's 86 in particular because apparently uh, Hell in Japanese sounds like the, the the word for 86 there. I apparently that's, that's from what I know. That's the lore, yeah. That but is the we lore. do have 86 seconds for donations, Foo. It's true. Alrighty, I'm down for that. <laughs> this way. We have $250 donation. This is from Toshiro. Nice. Says, <clears throat> you are close. <laughs> but the Pokemon Snap incentive was met before I could submit my donation. Looking forward to seeing some innocent Pokemon get hit with Pester Balls. <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to make that happen for the for the Pikachu and the Art Articuno. And it's Absolutely. Gonna be very cool. <laughs> That's going to be a fun run. We also have a $250 donation from Jason Costi saying, long time watcher and donator, let's make this a great GDQ and have fun, everyone. Um, also, I didn't answer it earlier, but my favorite Kirby game. Oh, yeah. Is, uh, it's kind of a tie between this and Kirby 64 because of the nice. dual power ups. That's right. That was my favorite That's part also, of that game. I, think, I love Kirby 64. I think it's the only other Kirby game where you have a maximum height where you actually lose breath. That is true. Yes. 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 That, that's a thing. And the best power up in the game, I love fireworks. Same. Yeah. Actually, it's the same. Cool. I love fireworks too. But there's so many. It's like you would think that this game could have been inspired by that for like the breath thing and like the refrigerator power yeah. up, like the vending okay. machine. The fridge is one of my favorites in that yep. as well. Classic fridge. There we go. <gasps> Ta-da! Hell. I don't feel bad about missing this one now. Yeah, this one, this one's up here. This is the one you look up. Unfortunately, the capsule, uh, we're not towards the end of the level, like, remotely. But I guess it's a few minutes to get there, so we're just going to quit out and see if I get all this for fun. So I can just pretend it's whatever capsule I predict this time. Yep. Yeah. That's right. What's your prediction, then? It's totally still green coin. Nice, nice, nice. I think it's uh, Wild Woofy. Wild Woofy? Wild Woofy. Nice. Could be that. I don't know. Oh, no, not Could there. Yeah, that's, that's Halloween number two. That was not as flashy because you got to wait a while. The last one's in 6-3 here. It's very, it's actually like surprisingly simple to get, but it's not something you'd think about, considering just how video games work a lot of the time, really. That's right. But it's, it's, this one is my personal favorite. I go in order, but like, I think I think like the second one, like the first one we do is like my, my second favorite. This is my actual favorite out of all of them. I love the music in this stage, by the way. Like, yeah. One of my, this is one of my favorite uh, Yeah, you can do it. Kirby music has always got like a really good factory. I think actually shout outs to Kirby 64 since we were speaking about it. Indeed. This I think this has some elements of inspecting the factory in it when it gets to like the the little bridge. Oh, I gotta break this. Uh, can I do this with Dragonfire? I can. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so we're just gonna go in the control room here, and then we're just gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna dip. See ya. I'm actually gonna go backwards to the beginning of the level now. That's that's how we exit the hell room here. It, it's very simple in how it is. I barely got squished. That's fine. I don't need the wall do anymore. We're good. That did a lot of damage. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, crunch. All right. I believe this time. Is this different from when you first I believe I will take this safely. <laughs> it might be moving a little bit fast. No, yes, it absolutely gets faster after that's you crazy. go into the extra room. 
Seems like it. Oh, yep. that was a blasting fire. Because I, I used like dragon fire on this level because I replayed it a couple times and like I remember being able to make all these cycles like easily. I'm in squish again. No. I'm one hit away. Oh no. I'll be fine. Don't 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 you worry about me. I'll be okay. There. Yeah, we're good. Nothing else can hurt me now. We're good. Except for me, the wild Luffy's at the, at the start of the level, but we're not we're not gonna worry about him. It's okay. Secret so as you can see now, liar. Uh, secret liar spawns along with that little uh, little ramp there, a little staircase rather, and then we just go all the way up here, and that's and that's where it is. Right through this load zone, takes it to a metal grate, or, or like a air, air duct, I guess, and it's right in here. That one's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And here we go, here it is. But this time there's all these boxes here. What's up with that? Well, the Hallerum is actually underneath the boxes, as you can see. There's an L right there. Got an A right over here. And there's the H. Oh, more. And we do all that, as well as HAL. And it'll give us this. It was a little, a little vending mouth. Which hey, we've we not seen the run, by the yeah, way. Yeah, we didn't see vending machine all speed run. So. Which, by the way, has 860 shots in this because how? 86. 86. Important yeah. number. But if we destroy all the all the uh, numbers now, it'll give us a little nice little thing. We get all this for reds. And we have like a red one, which is like high value. It's a level uh, three, yeah. Yeah, it's very good. Again, unfortunately, we're far away from the end of the level, so we're not going to see that one. But, yeah, there's all three Hallerms in the game. Those are all big Easter eggs. I've been messing around with Shasta. This run's been a lot of fun. Uh, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash if you want some of the Kirby Sky Land runs. I'll be running this for months. I love this game. I don't plan on stopping. This game is awesome. It's a fun run, game. I'm also planning on running all wall of these when I get back from GEQ, so look forward to that. Yeah, big round of applause once again for Mr. Shasta. You did an excellent job showcasing this game. Thank you, thank you. Awesome job, Shasta. On your second run today, you did a fantastic job. It was so much fun to be a part of that. So thanks for letting me uh, join in on the conversation. <laughs> All right, everybody, I hope that you all enjoyed Kirby and are excited for Pokemon Snap. This is going to be wonderful. Quick donation for you. Uh, $5 from Nick, who says, what's up, Kung Fu and Twitch chat? Nick here checking in from Hudson, Wisconsin. So happy to see we're back to having in-person live events. Let's get some hype for that. Hi. Okay, awesome, awesome. I've been watching GDQ for five years now, but this is my first time getting to donate during the live event. Growing up, Pokemon Snap was such an amazing game, allowing myself and others to be creative, relax, and take pictures of all the adorable Pokemon. And it was especially nice to have such a supportive professor. Wonderful. But seriously, with gas prices on the rise, I think Todd would agree, we all need to start taking the train more. Wait a second. How about a $5 donation train? I'm not sure what the 01 runs on, but I need to see that game get speed ran. Also, shout outs to Mr. Shasta for the amazing Kirby in the Forgotten Land run. Keep up the amazing commentary, Kung Fu. Thank you so much. Very, very sweet. All right, everyone. As we take in that wonderful, wonderful run that we just saw and get ready for the next wonderful, wonderful run, we are going to um, have a quick break, get some water, get up and stretch, get ready for the runs. It's going to be so much fun. We will be right back.
Uh, welcome back, everyone. I hope you properly hydrated while I was gone. <laughs> We have lots of wonderful donations coming in, so I'd love to read another one out for you. Um, $50 from Jenny, who says, one of my seven-year-old nephews is now trying to find all the howl rooms while the other is rescuing all the poor abandoned waddle dees. <laughs> Thanks for the great run. Would love to get a shout out to Finn and Gavin. Now I'd love to tell you all a little bit about one of our sponsors. So, Fangamer. Let's talk about Fangamer. Fangamer is uh, a video game merchandise company who ships worldwide and has all kinds of amazing, uh, amazing merchandise, um, including lots of GDQ things. I myself personally have gotten many of their GDQ items and they're awesome, very high quality, very fun. I got all the virtual attendee badges. Uh, there's some wonderful mugs and I see this beautiful SGDQ 2022 pin.